the audio is not switched on. <laughs> We're having some technical difficulties. There we go. There you go. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. What? <laughs> this is fucking weird. <laughs> like, really, really weird. Mm. But yeah, I'm good. It's nice to see you. How about you? You too? How's I'm things? Well. It's going good. Good. Pardon? It's going good. I'm a little bit nervous, I won't lie. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. Enough. Very weird. <laughs> All right, so I think, boys, you know Eve. She's shown up in a couple of the videos about a month ago. And we're going to talk about our relationship and we're going to talk about some advice. And we'll, we'll see how it goes. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Eve. <laughs> um, I'm Hamza's ex girlfriend. And yeah. Chilling. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to say. Honestly, I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, what was it like dating me? When it was good, it was really good. But when it was bad, it was really bad. As a, as a summary, mm -hmm. basically. Can you expand on that? Um. Yeah, like obviously we got on really well like we have like a really good connection and stuff but I think you have a lot of toxic traits like a lot of toxic traits mm. um which I don't think you'd call as toxic but they are toxic um and ultimately in my opinion that's why we ended um but dating like it was good like I'm saying this as if our relationship was bad like the most part of our relationship was good it was just the end was shit <laughs> mm. And what were the toxic yeah. traits? Um, controlling, manipulative, like borderline abusive, emotionally, not physically. Emotionally, not verbally. But just, I don't know, I feel like you played mind games quite a lot. Mm. Let's go through them. So, <clears throat> why would you say controlling? Why do you think I'd say controlling to start with? You tell me if that's, if that's one of my traits that you saw in me. Um, telling your girlfriend, if you go to a nightclub without me, I'd break up with you. It's just, it's just a little bit controlling. <laughs> um, just like all the things at the end of our relationship, like telling me the first, like going to nightclubs, like, oh, what I could post on Instagram or not. I mean, I'd never posted the kinds of things that you were on about, but um, like not moving to Liverpool. Like when you said to me, if I went and moved to Liverpool, you'd break up with me. Like that's controlling. Like that's using, like you used my fear of abandonment and fear of rejection, which like, I've had for all my life, like from my childhood and like stuff with my dad and stuff, like you really did use that against me a lot. So you felt that like that was a, like a calculated attack that I made on you? No, I don't think it was calculated. Um, yeah. Mm. I don't think it's calculated. I just think it's the way that you are. Do you know, it's interesting how we have very, very different interpretations of the same thing. Because you see this yeah. as controlling, and I would honestly see this as healthy boundaries. And the way that you said it as well is almost like, like you maybe could even remember a false moment in your mind of me saying, okay, if you do this, I will break up with you. But mm -hmm. I don't ever speak like that. It was more, I am how not the girlfriend. That's what you said. Nah. Is it, how is it, I was sat here. I was literally sat here. Different. I remember the conversation. So you, you genuinely believe I said, if you do this, I will break up with you. I threatened you. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like me? That was when... Yeah. Well, no, but yeah, towards the end. Do you not remember, like, when I was here, I came back to uni for six days, and then you broke up with me? 
I came home um, and then when we had that conversation in the car when we got back together that's when you laid out these boundaries about nightclubs and Liverpool and and did you not feel like that was a, a good discussion to have? Um, boundaries, of course, but not the boundaries that you set. Healthy boundaries are, I need, I need X amount of free time to spend time with my friends or I need X amount of time to spend and focus on my work. Like, they're healthy boundaries. Or, or I don't feel comfortable, like, say... Or he healthy boundaries are... Like, you do have some healthy boundaries, like, not posting, like slutty pictures to Instagram because obviously you don't do that if you're in a relationship um like that is a healthy boundary I think but the boundaries that you set weren't necessarily the healthiest I disagree I'd say um, it shouldn't really need to be said that type of boundary because when you're in a, a good committed relationship you, you don't do certain things anymore and that yeah. is, you can see it as controlling if, for example, you want to take a negative view of the person who says that. And if you've already kind of, you know, you want to like say something towards them, but that, that's single people stuff, going to a nightclub, going to like move into a place, which is, yeah. which in this house where there's going to be a lot of parties, where there's going to be a lot of like people interacting with each other. That's like single people stuff. And if we weren't in a serious relationship, if we were just kind of casually dating, fair enough, I would say that's controlling. I'd agree with you when we're genuinely planning our life together and we were like talking about kids and everything and then we're saying this stuff and, and you know, then you're like oh yeah let me uh, next week i'm gonna go to this nightclub like that's the two things don't match you, you don't if, if you were being honest with the plans that we made you don't also believe that whilst thinking oh yeah let me go live my, my normal single life like enjoy my hot girl summer i I, I understand why you think that a hundred percent. Like I've actually made like I've made a few notes of things I want to say. This was actually <laughs> Let's one pull of them. <laughs> but then, like, like, I actually got some stuff. <laughs> That's funny. Um, All right, I was writing these notes. Before we begin, like, before it starts, maybe getting hurtful or some shit. I didn't do this, but I did. I did plan to. So we'll do like a real life journaling session where we'll say three things that we were grateful for each other first before we like oh, you ruined my life and I, I hate you <laughs> i'll go okay. first yeah okay, okay. All right. i'm grateful for your laugh i found that really really cute i'm grateful for the time that we went to liverpool and we saw my old house that i used to live at and then we went to that spot that i knew that we would go to one time and we did the like we were just running on the side of the wall i think that was a, such a very very cute day mm. and i'm grateful for the vibe that we've had all this time that we would meet in the car and it would be night and we'd just be listening to music and like all the songs we used to listen to i try mm. not to listen to them anymore because it, it's like <laughs> by association i'm instantly thinking about you and yeah but i'm grateful for that thank you um i'm grateful for i mean i said this to you like all throughout our relationship even though things have ended in like quite a bad way and like i like yeah things have ended in a fucking horrible way but i am grateful because I do feel like, despite everything, you did have a very positive influence on me. Um, which, I mean, I said that to you like all throughout our relationship, so you know that, of course. But um, I'm grateful for all the time we spent together. I think, like, when I think back to things, like the main ones, like Delamere Forest and like the Peak District, those are like two of my favourites. Um, and the same, I'm grateful for like the vibe we always had. I feel like we always just got on really well. Mm. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> same with the music. We're negative about each other now. And I fucking hate <laughs> <Pull out> you. <laughs> <the list>. <laughs> <laughs> I've got fucking shit to say. Shit Later to on. say. <laughs> Let's go. <Put> in. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Go on, you go first. Ladies first. Yeah. Hmm? What were you talking about just before that? 
about no, I didn't. Um, boundaries. Hmm. I can't remember exactly what I was saying. Um, Look through the notes. Oh yeah. Um, like, I do believe that in terms of stuff like this, you are quite close-minded. Because even though I obviously disagree with what you have to say, because for me, this is the reason why we broke up. I feel like we both have, like, we'll get into it later, I'm sure, but I feel like we both have very different ideas of why we actually broke mm. up. Than, yeah, because, I mean, we've never discussed it, I guess. Um, but although, like, I do completely disagree with your belief about how well you don't go to nightclubs in a relationship which yeah obviously if you're in a relationship you shouldn't be going to nightclubs with your friends every weekend but that's a given like that's just not going to happen and if it is then you shouldn't be in a relationship to start with that would have never been me and you knew that um but I can still understand why you believe those things like I can understand like oh yeah you don't put yourself in a position that makes your partner anxious but then also like you shouldn't like you shouldn't we do feel anxious in these situations because i do as well but we shouldn't feel anxious because if you really trust the person it shouldn't be an issue do you know what i mean and it's like how often was i going to go to nightclubs realistically how often did you think i was going to go to nightclubs hard to say because you you do have this vibe of like oh no not me like you know i'll, I'll go once every now and then but i only knew you through covid anyway when that stuff was closed yeah and the moment at least not in the nightclubs but like the bars were open and you were going straight away and so you do have maybe not like specifically a nightclub but you have the persona of someone i'd imagine who like you are like a pretty popular girl you've got the pop in social circle and stuff you built that up so you've got enough people to like hang out with so whilst it not might not be specifically yeah. a nightclub it is it, in that environment of like nighttime drinking mixing with a bunch of guys and girls mm-hmm yeah, I understand that. I have probably been to nightclubs probably maximum 15, 20 times in my whole life. Um, so it's not something I would have done often. I feel like we both have a very, very, very different opinion of nightclubs because we've had very different experiences. Like my, I've never been to a nightclub single. I've never been to a nightclub, not once when I've been single. So I've never gone to get with a guy or and, or anything like that. I've never gone for male attention, whereas I feel like you genuinely believe that the only reason a girl will go to a nightclub is to get attention from guys. And the only reason a girl will get ready and they'll put on their makeup and they'll make themselves look nice to go to a nightclub is for guys. And that's li like, yeah, that's the case for a lot of girls, like a lot of girls, but not for me and not for my friends. That's never been me, <laughs> like ever. That's what? Literally. Every girl would say, though, that's the issue. Yeah, maybe it is, but that does, it doesn't matter what every girl would say. It matters what I'm saying because I was your girlfriend. Mm. It shouldn't matter what every other girl... Oh, every other girl goes to nightclubs to impress guys. Okay, cool, but I don't. Are you in a relationship with every other girl? No, you were in a relationship with me. So what should have mattered? We've got to know that they, including you, you don't consciously know something like this you don't consciously think oh i'm gonna get ready i hope I, I pull a guy tonight guys do this guys openly will say it to their friends like oh i hope i get laid tonight i hope i pull a girl tonight girls don't exactly have that openness even though girls are becoming more open with their sexuality and they will say to their friends mm -hmm. like oh, i really want to pull a guy it's like you don't exactly know it yourself because you've got 5,000 years of progress, sexist programming telling you, okay, don't, don't show any kind of sexuality, be repressed. And so subconsciously, this is probably what's happening is subconsciously, you kind of know that if you look really pretty tonight, that there's a chance to get with a guy who's like really, really, really awesome. But it's not something that you hear those thoughts in your mind that you can actually express to people. Which yeah, is, it's like, it's I... gone. In my experience, if one of, say, if I was going on a night out with a friend and they were like, wanted to get with a guy, uh, well, not a friend, because I'd never go with just like one friend. It would always be like a group of people. Um, they'd say it. <laughs> they maybe don't say it to guys, but they say it to their like girlfriends. 
but I've never gone to clubs for like that reason. I've never put on makeup to impress a guy. I've never worn a nice outfit to impress a guy. Yeah, it's like when I've got ready and the guy compliments me, says I look pretty, it feel like it fucking feels nice when you put effort into your appearance, but that isn't the reason I do it. Like when I put on makeup, when I get ready, like that's my like form of expression. Like that's it's like creativity. Like I could fucking put like a unicorn on my eye if I wanted to. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you can do whatever you want with it. It's not for men. And I feel like that's a very outdated view to think that makeup and clothes is for men when that's not the case. For some girls, yeah. But for me, no. And that's what matters in this situation because it's our relationship, not every other girl. What's the first thing you have on your your list that you'd like to discuss <laughs> on my list mm. um so i've like done it in sections so the breakup is the first one yeah what's your first one on your list first one was what was it like dating me that we asked that one and then the second one was the best and the best and worst things about dating me we kind of I mean, you can answer that if you want, but kind of discuss that with me. Um, <laughs> the toxicity um, is the worst and the best was like the <laughs> positive influence on the vibe. Um, I wouldn't even say that was the best thing. I'd just say, yeah, no, that probably was the best thing actually for the vibe. Mm. And the, the third one I've got is why did we break up? I've got why did we break up as well. What's your best and worst thing about dating me? Mm. Best would be... <laughs> Do you know what it changed? I remember saying to you and even to a bunch of boys that the, the best thing about you was the fact that you were, you were like feminine and it complimented me so nicely that I could, I could influence you that I could, that positive influence, I could, you know, I could tell you meditation, you do it, I could tell you this and this and this. Even from the start, before I got you onto those self-improvement practices, I'd often see that you'd almost automatically be influenced by my decisions and my, my mindset, even though I don't think you'd be able to admit this or you even knew what would happen, what was happening. But I remember sometimes it'd be late and we'd be tired. For example, you'd say that you didn't like this song or something. And then I would say like, that's nah, pretty good. And you'd be like, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> no, actually, this is all right. Actually, it's okay. <laughs> so that's, I thought yeah. that was your best trait. And then after everything ended and I was opening my mind up to someone and he, he said, no, 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 that's, that's not what you want in a girlfriend at all. And I was so confused because I literally thought the ability to influence your, your girlfriend and to like train her to be, you know, into the self-improvement was awesome. I was like, no, if she's got that trait, that means that, she'll blow wherever the wind goes or she'll go wherever the wind blows and that anyone around her will be able to influence her. And straight up, I was like, that's the unfortunate truth is when you were with me, you were completely obsessed with me. You did everything exactly like me. But then when you were with your friends, you turn exactly like them. When you were with your family, you turn like them. And so it, it was like kind mm -hmm. of like a shape shifter personality where no one really knows who the real version of you actually is. I think that's fair to say. Why not? I just don't think it is. Do you think it's not think nice to it. say, but do you think it's partially true at least? Um, I think it's partially, it is partially true. Like, um, I don't think that's the case that I'd just be influenced by anything. I'm influenced by things that interest me. I'm not this shapeshifter person. I'm not a different person when I'm with my mum. I'm not a different person when I'm with you. I'm not a different person when I'm with my friends. I saw that. Of course. We, yeah, but we talk like, I'm not going to talk about the same things to you that I talk about with my friends, am I? Of course, I'm going to be slightly different. We were in a relationship together. I'm not going to be the exact same with you as I was with my mum or I was with my friends because we were in a relationship. Yeah. I'm not expecting you to, to talk about the same things, but your, your personality tr changed a significant amount. If you'd be next to me, you were very similar to me and you'd be like the other half of me. And then you went away, you went to uni 
and it's like you turn into just like a normal girl who's doing shit on like social media who's like stalking my checking my followers and everything and and it it was like you you literally changed the way that you'd speak and like the attitude that was that you were holding you were presenting I don't think it's Mm -hmm. something that you would be so aware of and it is like it is somewhat of a commentary I do see this with a lot of people and especially if they've had similar experiences as you had which we won't we don't need to go into too much detail but like a lot of the stuff that the boys who are watching this have experienced where, you know, you've been in high school and, and you've had like some shitty friends. And so if you felt somewhat excluded when you were younger, you will do everything it takes to make sure you, you're around a pop in social life now that you're accepted amongst other people. And that, that's, I think what you portrayed, which I thought was your best trait was that essentially you were, you were doing what it took to be accepted by me. And I thought that was an awesome trait. It made me feel awesome that, oh, you know, she, she's changing the mind about the song and about bigger things and everything. And then I would see you do that with other people. And Like what? <laughs> it's like your interest changed. So your interest was, next to me, it was like a simple life. It was very similar to the life I'm living where it was like dopamine detox. You barely use your phone. You barely do like any of the bad behaviors or anything. And the moment you step away from me, you, you, you want to go to nightclubs, you want to like drink and, and get into like the instant gratification. But Hamza, the thing that you don't understand is I didn't want to go to nightclubs. Like if, if a friend asked me like, oh, do you want to go out this weekend? Like, I'd either say yes or no, depending on if I wanted to. It wasn't my friends influencing me. But the issue was I wasn't upset with your control because I so desperately wanted to go to nightclubs. It's that I shouldn't have been being told what I can and can't do in the first place. I probably would have never gone to nightclubs. Realistically, I probably would have gone to a nightclub without you maybe once a year, maybe maybe twice a year at a push. It isn't the fact that I really, really desperately wanted to do these things. It's because I was being told that I couldn't. That isn't healthy. That isn't healthy. That isn't in any way, shape or form that is not healthy. So still to this day, you, you, you can remember a time where I said, you cannot do this, that if you do this, like I gave you an ultimatum, if you do yeah. this, I will break up with you. Cause that's not how it went. Yeah. So the conversation, it is how it talking went about boundaries. Time. I had broken up with you and we were kind of like speaking again. So we kind of back together. And I said that I didn't want a girlfriend who would be going into that environment. That's, it's not exactly yeah, with controlling. With Liverpool, that's a different thing. With Liverpool, that's a, I, I can understand that slightly more because like, I wasn't going to go into a party environment. I was going to go live with people who like to go out and party sometimes, but it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a party environment at all. Like, I'm, I'm going to be a master's student. They're going to be third-year students. Like, it's not going to be like a first-year party house. But I can't even remember what my initial point was with that. No, that was a different thing. But nightclubs is a whole separate thing that has absolutely nothing to do with me going and living there. It's still the same boundaries. It's not. You expressed your boundaries to me that you didn't feel comfortable with me training shirtless in in the gymnastic ring spot. I Mm. stopped straight away. Because I I saw this for the long uh, long term. For example, like I wasn't doing any of the partying stuff, but for example, you did say that. I think like, yes, sound. Like, this is my baby girl. This is the girl who I'm going to have kids with. Like a, a party at nightclub is, is nothing. If it even makes you feel 1% worried or anxious, it's not worth it because I plan my life with you. And to see you like, I get like argue against this and to see your family kind of back all this up. It was just show me like, maybe your intentions weren't honest. Maybe the plans that we made with the stuff that you'd say about your connectivity to me and, and your future that you saw with me. I can't see. I can't see how you'd see both of those being a reality to to still keep up the nightclub environments, party stuff. You say you say keep up time. as if that's a lifestyle I have. I've never had that lifestyle, not once in my whole life. The most I've probably ever been out is like twice in one week. <clears throat> I can I can I can completely understand where you're coming from in saying that. Like I can understand why you have that view, but then also, like I'm not I'm not saying I was perfect in the relationship. I was toxic as well. Like that's something like I should have said that earlier. But I was toxic as well. Like saying to you, "Oh, I don't want you to train here," because it makes me uncomfortable. 
that's toxic. Me saying to you, oh, what was, what was, I can't remember what my other, like, boundary that I made. Can I actually, can I be honest with you? You know, when we were having that conversation about boundaries and we were sat in the car and you were like, oh, what's your boundaries? I was actually thinking in my head, I was like, I, I don't, I can't actually think of any boundaries that I have, which, like, I should have boundaries. Like, that's my own, like, fault, of course. But I was like, actually thinking in my head like do I just say that I don't have any because I don't like I'm pretty chill with most things or do I turn around and say oh my boundaries are you don't train at this spot you don't I can't remember what the other one was um I can't I, I can't remember what the other boundary I set was but um something like training shirtless or something but I was like oh do I just use this as a, a chance to get rid of all the things that make me slightly uncomfortable because if that's what hamsters do and I might as well do the same thing but I would have never if you hadn't have, like said to me, oh, you, you can't do this, you can't do that, I would have never turned around and said to you, oh, you can't work out here. Because I know that me being anxious about you working out at that spot, that's like a valid, that's a valid thing to be worried about. Like you get girls there, like you did right before we got together. Like that's a very valid thing for me to be anxious about. But I would never, ever, ever tell you what you can and can't do just because I'm anxious. Like I've had these insecurities and these like anxieties way before you and they'll exist way after you. I would never, ever, ever use them or use attachment styles or use being insecure as an excuse to tell you what you can and can't do. But I did because that's what you were doing. And I, I'll put my hands up and I'll say I'll regret that. Like I behave toxic at the end, but that's not something that I would normally do. I'm not sure you've got like an understanding of healthy relationships. I'm not going to lie. I don't think you have an understanding of healthy relationships. Can I, well, have you been in a healthy relationship before? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, from what you've told me of them, they didn't seem... Maybe the first... Do you mean the first one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll give you that, to be fair. Have you? That did seem very healthy. It wasn't at the end, but generally it was very healthy. The reason why I say that, that I don't think, is because of something you just said then, that you call yourself toxic. And honestly, that it's not even been in my mind at all. Like, I, I don't think... I don't call myself toxic, but I behaved in toxic ways. But you think that you telling me something that made you anxious was toxic? Not telling you, but telling you what you can and can't do because of it, Yes. But I'm not telling I don't, you I don't understand how your mind goes to that. I, 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 like, that isn't what the conversation was. Like, it, your mind... What was the conversation then? You, you believe that when we had that conversation, we were saying, this is what you can and can't do. Because, it, like, you actually think yeah. that you said that to me, but you, you never once said it. Like, we, we weren't talking to each other in a, in a hostile, negative way. I'm so surprised. No, it wasn't. Perception. That it wasn't us saying... Like, you did not say... Um, you, I don't want you to train shirtless. You can't train shirtless. And I did not say, I don't like, you cannot, you cannot go to nightclubs or anything. I'm so surprised that you have this perception of that conversation because it was literally us saying what would hurt us and what, what makes us feel anxious. And the other person was like, like I said it to you and you were like, Oh yeah, yeah. Like I don't even like going to nightclubs. So if it makes you anxious, like there's no worries. Like, Oh, and you literally even said like, Oh, about moving, like you plan to move somewhere and you were like, Oh no, no. Like if it makes you anxious, like, yeah, you're going to like probably decide against it. And I did the same thing for you when you said, like, about me training in the gym ring spot. You didn't say, like, no, I don't want you to tra train there. You just said, like, yeah, it does make me, like, anxious because you, you got a girl from there just before we got together. And you, um, if you keep training there, it's like, you know that girls walk past and they talk to me. And so I said it to you. Like, I said, okay, like, I'm going to stop training there. Not once did either of us actually say, to, like, we weren't that type of couple. I'm so surprised that you have. I didn't say, pardon I'm so surprised Sorry, that you have like, like perception of us that we were the, the type of couple who, who said you can do this and you cannot do this. It was more that we were saying about our own mm -hmm. personal feelings. Say, you were saying that it would make you feel like scared because of like what, you know, girls could walk past. And I was saying, yeah, it can make me feel scared if you went to the nightclub because of the experiences I've had in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. neither, like neither of us actually said to each other, oh, you can't, I didn't say you can't go there. I didn't, yeah, neither of us actually physically said that. Not, that's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying you said to me, oh, if you, went into, if you went to a nightclub, I'd feel too anxious. 
so I, I couldn't be with you. I, I, I wouldn't be able to be in a relationship with you. But th- it doesn't matter so the do way you think that you that, said that it, is manipulative? Hansa. Do you think what you yes, just said Yes, that there, is fucking manipulative. Oh, oh, my God. How is that manipulative? How? Because it's saying, oh, if you go and spend time at this place with your friends, I'm going to leave you. It sh- they should never be, like, it should never be you or that. They can coexist, like. So if someone, if that was someone's boundary and they did not want to be with someone who was going into that environment that they weren't comfortable with, what would the the non-manipulative way that this person should express it? Because I think I did it in a pretty healthy way. Hmm. What would be the non-manipulative way? I'm not saying that you said it in a nasty way. It's coming across that way because like we've broken up like, is not exactly going to talk about things in the nicest way, but I'm not saying that you said it in a nasty way. You said it exactly like that. If you if you went to a nightclub with your friends, I'd feel too anxious, so I'd break up with you. That is what you said. Mm. Correct. So that that is manipulative. It's saying, oh, if you don't behave in a way that I that I specifically want you to, if you don't fit this cookie cutter, then that's it. And I'm not when I'm talking about this, I'm not talking about going to Liverpool. I'm talking about just nightclubs specifically, which I don't know why I'm focusing on that because I don't even like them anyway, but I literally don't. (laughs) I'm confused. But it isn't the issue. The issue isn't, the issue isn't, oh, I so desperately want to go to nightclubs. Oh, I so desperately want to go out and be around loads of guys and just be with my friends and never spend time with you. That isn't the issue. The issue is that you shouldn't tell someone what they can and can't do. That's, the bottom line it isn't it doesn't matter what it is no i agree with that and that i don't believe that i've ever i ever told you what you could or could not do and that's i think by the way you've you've like we both just admitted that i said something as very similar to that to if you go to those places i'll be too anxious i'll be too like uncomfortable with it and so i wouldn't want to be with you but that is healthy boundaries manipulation <laughs> toxicity and like abusiveness is me saying no if you go there i will break up with you if you like you cannot go no it's not even that even that is like honestly on the healthier side it's it's if i said you cannot you're not allowed to go that's manipulative that's abusive that's toxic if i said you are not allowed to go if i said that like you want to we're gonna stay together but you're not allowed to do this my thing was okay if that's what you want to do then we're not compatible Mm -hmm. That's healthy. That is not manipulative. Like, I think, like, everyone around you has, has kind of twisted your mind to think that what the, some healthy parts of our relationship, just because it, it kind of insults the people who have been giving you advice. If, for example, your friends go out to these clubs or, for example, your mom likes to drink and her, her, her response to this was... <clears throat> Oh, Hamza's going to control you. He'll never, never let you out for a drink. Like, and she got really, really like angry and, and like resentful towards me when she heard about me saying that. Oh, I like it's, we're not going to be compatible if you go out to nightclubs. They they were personally getting offended at something I said without actually taking into account the fact that you didn't even like to go. And you've said it like ten times in this call. You didn't even like to go there. So the fact that if you are going, when you know of how worried that would make me feel because of experiences I've had in nightclubs, when no matter how much you want to say it, you you do like you were able to see it from my point of view that yeah, half of, of the girls I've been with have got boyfriends, a girl saying that she's got a boyfriend. It, it doesn't stop the, that type of guy. And it happens only in nightclubs. And so like the mindset I've, I've had for years, which I tell the boys, which I tell everyone is that no girl when she enters the nightclub has a boyfriend. It's just, they, they'd love to think that they do. They'd love to say like, oh no, I'm just getting ready to have fun with the, the girls. But if the right guy approaches her and he says the right things, it, there is no relationship. The girls will back, uh, back her up. If the boyfriend's not there, it literally takes like two sentences to get a girl to like drop a relationship for the right guy. And you can say, oh no, but I'm different. I'm, I'm different to all the women you've ever experienced in your life. And I, I don't think that's exactly like a fair statement to say, but you could say it. But either way, having empathy for, for my experiences and what I, what I felt and the fact that you didn't even want to go to clubs, you should instantly be saying like, yeah, like, I'm not going to go then. Maybe we'll go together. And I did say that. Did I not say that to you? But then you're literally a couple of days later, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a club on 21st of June that I'm going to go to with my friend. No. 
no, that wasn't that wasn't what happened, Samson. We were on FaceTime and we were talking about it, <clears> and I said. I completely forgot and Harriet reminded me today that like literally like a month ago we had this thing booked when everything was meant to reopen and I was like would I be able to go and you said no but it isn't it isn't even like I can completely like I agree with that like some girls some guys are, like a lot of people are horrible a lot of people are like untrustworthy like should not be in relationships but if I for one second ever thought that if I were to go into an environment where arguably yeah Cheating is much easier in nightclubs. If I ever thought that if I were to go into an environment and would cheat on someone, I wouldn't be in a relationship to start with. Like, the, you always would use the term of, like, bad patches. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. What did you say at the end then? Because there was a point I was going to make, but I forgot what it was. What, that you didn't want to go? No, it's something that you said at the end, but I can't remember what it was. Mm. Um, that you weren't being like empathetic to how I felt with my experiences. Oh yeah, um, I I can understand why you disagree with that because of obviously everything I'm saying now. But I just want to like reiterate my issue isn't the fact that like you said, oh, I won't feel comfortable if you went to nightclubs. Like it's not about nightclubs. It's just the fact that you were saying like what I can and can't do anyway. What I forgot what the even what the point even was. I keep going off on these tangents and forgetting what I'm even saying. What was it? I'm oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um oh yeah I wasn't being empathetic. Um do you like think that I wasn't being empathetic? Yeah you weren't why I don't think you had any level of empathy in our relationship i think you you were like very very quick to drop your attempts at trying to make me feel better if, if you made me feel anxious if you made me feel worried i remember there was a couple of times when we'd be on a call and and literally within 30 seconds of you trying to make me feel better you just kind of shrug your shoulders and say like, oh well i don't know what i can do then i don't know what else i can say to you these situations would never happen on calls they wouldn't exactly we'd happen always... on the call, but we'd be talking about it afterwards. So. I don't remember anything ever happening like that in on the call, but I remember it happening in person. And yeah, I should have been more empathetic, 100%. But I wasn't shrugging my shoulders and being like, oh, don't know what to say now. I'll give up, don't know what to say. But I was genuinely saying like, I, like, I don't know how to... Re like in a lot of situations, I didn't know how to reassure you. Like I tried what I thought would work, what would work for me. And it wouldn't work and that's I yeah I shouldn't have said that I agree like I didn't behave in the best ways in our relationship I think Jen, I don't think it's fair to say that I wasn't empathetic I think you have this assumption of me and it actually really hurts that you have this assumption of me because I remember when I came back to uni yeah I messed up and I did that whole Instagram thing which I shouldn't have done like I looked through um who you were following um which I shouldn't have done but I like I hand and heart can say like subconsciously yeah I was doing that out of insecurity but I genuinely wasn't doing it out of insecurity like I was just messing about with my friend and I can understand why that comes across stupid because it was stupid I didn't think about it at the time and I think you have this assumption that my friends are always like oh like backing me and hating anyone else like that I'm with but after I, after I went and told Harriet about that afterwards and she was like, Eve, you shouldn't have done that. Like, that was really messed up. You shouldn't have done that. And I was like, oh God, I didn't even think of it in, in a bad way because I wasn't doing it in a bad way. But I shouldn't have done that. And it's like, and my mum called me out as well. My mum said, you shouldn't have done that. And she said that to you when she spoke to you about it, I'm sure. It was an interesting conversation I had with your mum, which it, <laughs> the reason I'll tell you now, like, why I have like such a, a negative perception of everything where I, right now I, I don't exactly look back with any kind of positivity is because of how yeah. I feel like everyone in your life was like two faced to me where they, your mom's calling me. We have an hour conversation. She's saying that I've changed your life. I've changed her life. I've changed your sister's life. I've been such a good positive influence. I'm, I'm so good and amazing. And, and I should come around on Saturday when you're not even there. Like I should come around and spend time with her and the family and everything. And, by expressing my one boundaries, everyone changed their, their opinions of me. And like we'll, we will get into the video as well. But 
that wasn't the boundaries wasn't what changed it was the boundaries paired with the video yeah but like it was originally the boundary like me expressing the fact that i didn't want like to feel i didn't want to be with a girl who was going to nightclubs was what started her sort of negativity of me where she was giving you like the mean girl attitude and she was like not speaking to you and everything and saying like you shouldn't come speak to me and everything and that's when she started you know essentially digging up dirt on me and yeah we'll give the but boys she watching like, no nah, she was if, if she was looking through all my old videos like it pretty much she was looking for something and she so- um she didn't look through it what happened was she had a conversation with her friend Kat and Laura's mom and Kat and Laura had seen the video before and then they heard what happened showed the video to their mom then they showed it her mum showed it to my mum. It wasn't my mum going digging. It was found because that's my friends said. told me. I don't know if that's true. Because that's, what I, thought the day that's that what I thought had happened. This wasn't like... My mum found out about the manipulation video days before we broke up. But we, like, we weren't speaking. I didn't know. I had no idea about this. I didn't find out until after we broke up that um, the video got sent by my mum's friend because my friend mm. showed it to their mum. Yeah. So for context for the context for the viewers we're watching, so Eve's like family or friends, they found an old video of mine, which is how to manipulate people using psychology. And I mean, I'll I'll link the video in the the description in the comments. I'd like to hear everyone's opinion of it. You can see, like, we can send hundreds of people there and see. Still to this day, I'm surprised that that video has been taken negatively because you watch it. And almost instantly I say, oh, by the way, I'm literally using the word manipulation for views. What we're just going to talk about you is how healthy people you interact. Don't. Huh? You don't say that in the video. Yes, I do. I say it in the video. And I also That's say it. it. Like, it's the first so sentence in the description. You can, yeah, it's in the description. Yeah. And I say it in the, like, manipulation sounds bad, but, like, it sounds like a horrible word. What we're actually doing is just positive reinforcement. And this is how healthy people interact with it's, yeah. If someone behaves I, like you like them to, then... Yeah you spend more time with them. There's, that's like, mm-hmm. you, it's okay. It's, it's manipulative in a certain way, but at this point it's like the word manipulation needs to, needs to have its negative label removed and just say like, okay, that's how humans interact. Everything at that point is manipulation. If, if mm-hmm. that is what, what you think manipulation is, is that someone acts in a way that you like it. So you like them more. Now, healthy people do this automatically. The reason why I'm making these videos is because these videos are not for healthy guys. They're for guys who are trying to be healthy, but right now they are unhealthy. All of their lives is spent on the computer screen. So they need to be taught this stuff. Your family who saw this and had a very, very negative, hostile, resentful vibe to me because of this video, they did not once consider the fact that I'm using YouTube as a business to help people who are help a specific type of person who's going to be attracted to that type of video that's why i want that video is like one of the highest views on my on my channel it instantly got like two thousand views because that's what these guys want to see they want to see a picture of a girl in the thumbnail they want to see a guy talking about getting girls and you've you've seen the transformation of, of the boys who watch a lot of my videos seeing the transformation where i don't do really that stuff anymore i'm not like a player anymore and so it's not exactly a reflection of me it's a reflection of the guy i'm trying to to attract so that he can go through the same journey as I have. But you guys saw it and you said, okay, this is Hamza. Hamza is manipulative. He is controlling. And he also said to, to Eve that she shouldn't go to nightclubs. So he's controlling, he's manipulative. He can't be trusted. He's grooming my granddaughter and she's not safe with him. We can't allow her to speak to him. And so we're going to break up. We're going to break them up. That was at least my perception of the breakup. Would you agree with that? Um... To some extent, yeah. To a a big extent, yeah. Because you have to understand, like, obviously you're saying um, this isn't, like, you. It isn't a representation of you. It's a representation of what you're trying to sell online. But you're saying in the video, this is what I do. You're using me as an example in that video. So, of course, my family are going to see it as a game when they, like, they don't know like YouTube as a business. They don't know that you're doing it to attract these guys to, do you know what I mean? To build your business, essentially. They've seen it as, oh, they're saying, he's talking about Eve and saying how he's managed to manipulate her into buying him food and going and getting drinks and giving her, giving like him her ring 
and then using like my text messages and stuff paired with the fact that I came back for I came back to uni for six days I came back because you broke up with me and then I moved out of in the space of this was all in the space of three days dropped out of moving to go and live with my best friend in Liverpool I said I wasn't like I obviously told them about the nightclubs and stuff but also another thing that I forgot to mention is I remember saying to you when we were having this conversation in the car like when we were talking about the boundaries like it wasn't exactly said like oh if you do x I will break up with you but that it was it that is what you were saying whether you said it that in that exact sentence that is what you were saying Another thing was, I remember I said to you, um, I don't know if you remember, talking about my friend Daisy, who lives in London. Um, I remember I said to you, oh, like, I barely ever see her. Like, would it be, like, just like speaking hypothetically, like sometime in the future, would it be okay for me to go and visit her? And you were like, that will make me feel comfortable. That will make me feel anxious. So, no, I'd probably end up leaving. I said that. Did not say, I, nah, you just took <laughs> that. Like, well. Your perception How of these things is that? completely off. When you said that, Maybe. I told you that I'd feel anxious about it. Of course I would. That was it. I didn't want to say, oh, if you go, if you go see your friend, then I'm going to like, you, you think you've been convinced that I'm manipulative. Everyone around you has, has fed this into you. You saw that video yourself be- like months before everyone else. And you literally just watched it with me as if it was nothing. And everyone has kind of like, maybe kind of, insulting you but like with the shape shifter kind of personality that said you you probably do have you've now believed this stuff and so you've gotten a far far negative more hostile view of all of our interactions because that is not how it went whatsoever no, you mentioned that in passing and i said yeah it would I, like i would probably feel pretty anxious with it that was it i didn't like we didn't just stop talking i was like no no no. if you do that like i'll break up with you now it didn't not no, you didn't say it like that. i never i never said that you said it like oh i break up with you you said no i feel too anxious yeah but that's that's which in my my head i can't remember whether you said i'd leave or not you probably didn't to be fair but in my head me thinking oh he said he'd feel anxious if i went to a nightclub so he would leave me so i'm thinking in my head oh he said it means that he's anxious so that means he's gonna leave me so i that's not like a fair thought to have though that's not like you can't exactly maybe it's not but that's the way you made me feel that's the way you made me feel but Anyway, back to like the video, you have to think like all the big changes that I've made in the space of a few days, like came home from uni, um, said about Liverpool. um, And then my family saw this video where you're saying like, oh, like women buy me, like they buy me things, like they do like the manual labor of, of like my work, of my job, like they come and see me, like and all this of course they're going to think that you're doing this as a game and that this is all some big, like, I don't think it was a game. Like we didn't mean to end up in a relationship. It just happened. Like I I know for a fact it wasn't a game. I don't think it was ingenuine at all. I feel like you, you believe that I think it was ingenuine. Mm. Is that true? No. So why did you ask me if I was manipulating you then? When did I ask you if you were manipulating me? When your family had an intervention with you and then I FaceTimed you and your grandfather um, answered the call and your whole family yeah, was like, swearing, <laughs> literally swearing at me, shouting across the he table. He doesn't swear. They were. He doesn't swear. Like, I, I can they still were. remember, like, see the disrespectful faces of the people who had literally just smiled at me and said, like, how much I've transformed your life. And your grandpa is go- calling me a cock. Your grandma's, like, climbing over the table, like, screeching, like, break up with me. If just None of this happened on the call that I was in. Maybe in the call that you and my granddad had when I was in the room. I, had, I, I heard absolutely you were, nothing of that. You literally just sat on the kitchen table because then he turned it around it and it was you. And it was like, we went from just me and you versus the world kind of vibe to you just automatically believing what they had said, where I smiled I and I said to you, like, said. oh, hi. And you literally just started, like, you went, aggressive on me out of nowhere like me and you were good literally a couple hours ago and you went aggressive and you're like oh this isn't a time to smile Hamza like where are you manipulating me like where are you manipulating me I wasn't I was not aggressive I was literally in tears I could bet like that was literally like like I can't even remember a lot of that conversation because it's just like I mean you saw me I was in a mess but when I was sat at the table with my family when all that was happening like behind the scenes when you didn't see the calls like I'm, I was defending you to them. You probably won't believe that because of everything I've said in this, but I was literally defending you. I'm going in this video because yeah, the manipulation video, that is how normal people interact. It's like, if the same thing had happened with that text conversation, 
and it was the other way around, I wouldn't have replied to you. Like, it, that is just how people interact, but it's the way you're explaining it in the video. And I'm sat there and I'm saying this to them and I'm going like, no, but like, this isn't, like, this is just how people act. Like, this is how people are in dating now, like, in, like, fucking 2021. So I was, I was literally sat there defending you at that table. You didn't know that because obviously you weren't there. Like, I can't blame you for not knowing that. I can't blame you for, like, I've always said this, like, since the breakup, like, I can't blame you for not knowing how I feel because I never really gave you that chance mm. to know how I felt. I think that you have, I think that you have a much more negative perception of what my perception is. What is your perception? If you, ask, if you look um, back over the, no, no, not, not right now, but let's say over the last week or so, when you randomly get thoughts of me in the relationship, what kind of thoughts are they? Um, go down the path. Mm. Generally, like, I, it's hard to put into words. I think like I don't believe I think you're a bad person at all like I don't think that like you you treated me very well in our relationship like I've always said that like I've like since like even after we broke not when I've spoken about it to people I've said like I, I can say he did treat me well like he did but I just think that you have I think in in terms of a lot of relationship stuff we have very different mindsets mm. yeah I agree so Absolutely. when I when I have these thoughts, I get up like I get upset, of course, because I'm upset like that it ended like this because I like we did end because of like your boundaries on my part. Um, but I do what like do I do have a lot of good thoughts as well. Pardon. What did you mean by what you just said? Then we ended because of my boundaries on your part. Yeah, on my like on my part, like from my view on my like reason why we ended because it's like a weird breakup like we never really spoke about anything it's like we went on this FaceTime call and it's like I can't even remember like who broke up with who but like we both knew that we were like breaking up with each other it was like a I feel like it was a very like mutual thing um what was the question again our our perception on the breakup yeah Mine was because I realised, like, after seeing the, like, after seeing the manipulation video in a different light, because obviously I, when I saw it, I saw it, like, I was like, a bit like, what the fuck, but I saw it in a more positive way because I was obviously with people. But then when I was kind of partially taken out of the situation and saw, saw it from a different light and then paired with everything else, I was like, wait. But there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of other things, that, like not things that happened, but things that were said throughout our relationship that like I kind of blocked out at the time. And then when like we've broken up and I'm like, shit, wait, this, none of this was okay. My well. Um, I've got it written down. I'm going to move back just because my back's hurting from sitting up. Oh, two sets. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just getting comfy. <laughs> um, um, it's just like a few things that you said. Um, so like, like throughout our relationship, obviously you said like my insecurity is your responsibility which to some extent it is. Um, but then you also said things that like very much contradicted that. So I remember when you said to me, this wasn't when we were just like seeing each other. This was when, I don't think we were in a relationship at this point, but I think this is when we both stopped like seeing other people. And when you said to me that you would, I can't even remember what the context it was said in, um, but I remember you saying that you'd have sex with my auntie. And I remember you saying that if we weren't in, like, we weren't in a relationship at this point, but we weren't not in a relationship. I can't remember, like, when we were, like, exclusive or whatever the hell that means. Um, 
I remember that really upset me at the time and I remember thinking like why did you say that like it wasn't exactly necessary and also another thing when you would say that your love is conditional and that all it would take is a conversation with your ex for you to get feelings with them again um and it's like yeah like it's not that big of a deal to say things like that but also it's you saying that I should be aware of your insecurities and I was very I can't remember what the word was that you used but I wasn't empathetic towards you and your insecurities in terms of me saying that it wasn't fair for you to say that you would break up with me if I went to a nightclub but then you played on my insecurities I think it's very hypocritical for you to say that I wasn't empathetic towards you when you literally said to me, Hamza, that you would have sex with my auntie. That like, there's no context for that to ever come up in conversation. And the next, and then the next time my auntie came over, you went and gave her a hug. And I remember you turned around and said to me, sorry, I'm getting upset. <sighs> um, yeah, and you, you gave her a hug. <sighs> And then you, I remember you turned around and said to me afterwards, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you were like, oh, you're getting anxious. I was like, no, not I wasn't before, but I am now. And you said about the auntie thing, you were like, oh, like if we were still seeing each other, like I'd try and make it happen. Like I could see it happening. Like, what, who says that to my girlfriend? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't want to get upset, but... I'm sorry, but you can't sit here and say that I was unsympathetic towards you and your insecurities when you were saying things like that to me. <sighs> that was disrespectful. I'm sorry for saying that. Thanks for apologising. Mm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I just feel like you did really play on my insecurities. I felt, I constantly felt, um, scared that you were going to leave me, like, all the time, especially towards the end. The last few weeks, like, I mean, obviously you saw me, like, I was just crying all the time, like, I wasn't doing well at all. Um, and it's like... I don't know. I was just, I just felt like I was walking on eggshells a lot of the time. Because I was just so, so scared of you leaving me. Mm. And I think you did play on that because you knew that. It's not the right word to use. It wasn't play. It wasn't. Yeah, maybe that's not the right word. Yeah. Because that's like assuming that I was playing a game or something, that I wasn't being hurt through all this time. That wasn't like feeling the, yeah. the pain like we, we connected and we, we got so attached that you experiencing pain was painful for me and I need you to know that because I think you have a perception of like I wanted you to like feel bad for this stuff anytime you felt bad like I felt bad too and that was the issue that we both just would get into this like very very negative hurtful cycle and I agree with you like honestly almost not not throughout the relationship but at least for like the second half of it i was i kept on saying it, like telling you like i was on the line of like not wanting to be with you and looking back at it now i realize it's because we should have we were never compatible for a long-term relationship like we were very very compatible in terms of like friends with benefit in terms of like just connecting with each other but i think that the foundation like uh, a friend that i spoke to said it perfectly for me that I, like, I had this feeling throughout our entire relationship but I wasn't able to put it into words up until he said it and he said that what you've built is is great but the foundation was always weak and that's what it was it was you as a person was not the type of person that not the type of girl that I wanted to have as my girlfriend 
that when we were just kind of casually seeing each other, I'd, when you'd tell me about like stuff that you were doing, in my mind, I'd, I'd just be like silently ju- judging you, thinking like, yes, don't get feelings for Hamza, don't be a dickhead, bro. Don't, don't get feelings for this girl, bro. She's a thought. Like. Same, the exact same thing about you. <laughs> we we literally were like stuff. friends with benefits potential. We were like, we, what is that? And I think <laughs> getting yeah. feelings for each other just kind of like, I, want, and I can't even say that because honestly, like the best part came once we got feelings for each other because we connected so well and we had... Yeah like such a great strong connection that I'd never felt before that was the best part and then of course it kind of slingshotted to the worst part that now because we've got that great connection we've got so much to lose and now we're just like at least I was like so anxious of losing it through our time together especially like before we got into a relationship I was thinking that like I I didn't plan it, but I saw the the trajectory of our time together that it would be that we'd be somewhat just doing the same thing for a while, just being, would stay single, but we'd keep seeing each other every now and then. And then once you finish uni and you matured a bit, then we'd probably get into a relationship then when you were like 22, 23. And I think that that would have been yeah. like the better case scenario because I did, I did my growing up over the last year. And to see someone like who does like normal people stuff is is weird for me because I'm not normal anymore. Like I'm very abnormal. And I think although we were compatible in terms of like our sort of companionship, we weren't compatible in terms of our, the habits and the people we surround ourselves with. And Mm -hmm. that always used to just scare me. And and to think that in my opinion, almost everyone around you was like a negative influence, even though, it's hard for me to explain why that was. I think maybe I've got the ego, the bias to think that good influence on you would be the things that I was doing, which was like getting you away from like the bad habits. Whereas we could argue that the bad habits is like good for you if you wanted to do them. But objectively we could say that, for example, going on social media, going out drinking is like somewhat of a bad habit. Whereas objectively everyone agrees like meditating and getting on self-improvement is a good habit. And so I felt like it was me against your entire social circle. It was me trying like, and I was winning. I'm not going to lie. That was the thing. It was like, everyone was pulling you away from the, the, like I was pulling you away from the bad habits. And like your mom said this, you've said this a lot of times, even in this cause that I was a very positive influence on you. And I don't feel the same about you on me. Like I wrote this on, like one of the love letters that like the last love letter that I sent you where you and your family got better because of me, but I only got worse. Like I, I took yeah. that sacrifice to be with you. I, I didn't voice. Like, how no, did you, how did you get worse? <laughs> like the shit we were going through was a lot of it was unnecessary. And a lot of it, if for example, like bad guy, good guy. But if we had to say that, if like you were the bad guy in a, a situation, it was like, just because you'd emotionally react to it and start crying because I was upset with you and I, you know, I'm not replying to you, for example, because I don't want to speak to you right now. I've lost attraction in you and stuff. Then you're crying and okay, I'm, I'm the bad guy now. Now I've, I've made you cry yeah. now. That's how it felt. I don't, think that, I don't think that's true. Like if I, like if I start crying, that's just... Like, you know, I'm, I'm emotional. I just react to things like that. But that isn't me automatically becoming the person who's in the right. But what's this, like, I can't, like, what's a situation where that kind of thing happened? Where you were like, oh, I'm not speaking to you. There was a few. Like. What? The, when you went to your uni house and then the social media shit. That was like the first big one. And then after that, it was like, yeah. it, I remember there being like a week or two where there was just kind of like negativity almost every single, like we'd be like fully in love with each other. We're spending all day on FaceTime, like literally 24 seven, like you're watching me have a poop like <laughs> seven times a day. And then the next day we're like, I'm back to thinking like, this is, this is horrible for me. Like this, like my life was actually better before this, like before we actually got serious, like, yeah, I used to think that as well. I used to, because like we obviously weren't in a relationship for a very long time. We were literally in a relationship for like, how long was it? Four weeks, like, five weeks. On I think April, it was that long. I think, yeah, it was like three weeks. I think it was three, 
literally like three weeks. It's so embarrassing. Oh my god. <laughs> Three put it on Facebook relations. and everything. I had to go silently delete the, the Facebook status. Go on to the Facebook. You fucking put it up twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> twice. You had to remove it two times. <laughs> Oops. Oh, God. Oh. Is it? <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was even going to say with that, but <sighs> yeah, three weeks. It felt longer than that. Like, I felt like. It's weird, like, I'm, we we got so attached to each other and so quickly. I think we already had, like, a good level of connection and a good compatible personality. But the moment that we actually yeah. became exclusive and we just kind of suddenly fell in love with each other and we became, like, so, so attached to each other that our relationship mm-hmm. was just very, very, like... It was just, like, very intense very quick. Yeah, that was it. It went from, like, nothing to, like... 100, and then zero. Yeah. yeah a, and literally, space of three weeks. <laughs> like what would take most... But it was longer than that. Couples, eh? It was longer than that, because we were exclusive for a while before we were yeah. in a relationship. So, like, six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> what would take most couples, literally, like, their three- to five-year relationship where they have the honeymoon period, and then they start, like, hating each other, and then they eventually break up. We did that in, like, six weeks. Like, we beat the high score. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh shit! Yeah, it's fucked. Oh. It's really- There's a video that I haven't released. That it was on like the list for the video editor Sam to edit, and then I just took it off because I rewatched it and it just made me really sad. Where it was titled like "Why You Should Care." And I was saying like, oh, you know, <laughs> Jeffrey doesn't doesn't want to care. Like he searches for advice on how not to care what people think. And I said that, oh no, like caring what other people think is actually like the, the big alpha male trait because the alpha male of like a tribe cares the most. And I said that caring has got me this business. And, you know, I went into like detail. I went into like unfiltered talk and I was talking about our relationship. And I, that's the one where I went like, really into detail with a bunch of our stuff this was like before we broke up so we were still like fully together and i keep calling you like baby girl and everything and i'm talking about like the secret handshake and and like connecting with oh, you I forgot and, about that. yeah <laughs> damn you still love me Pardon? Do you still love me? I don't know. Mm. Do you still love me? It's like... It's the... I'm not in love with you. It's, it's almost like I'm not allowing myself to because it would... It, it's not practical. It's not like you know, why would you like turn it on right now? It feels like something that we could allow it to turn on. Yeah. But we're just not letting it. Yeah. It, it's kind of like, it's almost like binary. And then it's like a percentage where it's like, you'll meet people, eventually it clicks and it's like, okay, this is the person that you love. And then from that point, it's like the percentage. And right now it's like, we're already in, in the loved. I don't think you can ever come out of that binary like we're on the one, like we're on love, but it's like been dialed down to like 1% where we can't exactly feel it because our mind and, and our body, our chakras or something has, has dialed it down so that we don't get hurt. <laughs> like it doesn't meet the circumstances of our lives right now, so it's just not Yeah. Allowed. But This is what, I know it hurt you, but this is what I meant when I said that like one conversation with like my ex could turn, like I could, I could be in love with them again. I could be, yeah, yeah, I could be in love because the right conversation with you and both of us would be back at 100. And I think, yeah, yeah, I think that's true. And so when I, when I said that about my ex, I didn't mean to obviously like scare you or, or make you feel negative. It was more that I was still trying to discover my own meaning and my own version of love. Yeah, of course. And that's I, think, how it, I don't want to um, lie to you, you know. Yeah. When I'm saying these things, like, um, 
like what I said before about like, oh, when you said your love is conditional and think about your ex. Um, I didn't, I don't think that, apart from the anti thing, because I can't really think that you would say that without thinking it wouldn't hurt me. Especially like, you knew what my insecurities were at that point. We'd like been through all this, like we were pretty much together. Um, but I don't think you said these things to hurt me. I don't believe that you did any of these things to hurt me. Like when you were controlling, I don't think you were doing that to hurt me. I, I, I know, I don't think, I know that you were doing it because you wanted what was best for me. But you can't, you can't take what you think is best for someone and tell them what they can and can't do based on that. Like, look, I'll give you an example. Okay, so my ex-boyfriend, um, obviously we were together when I went to uni. Um, he was cheated on. I probably shouldn't be saying this on the internet, but fuck it. But he was cheated on um, by his ex. And they, she is, I think she's still in a relationship with that guy now. And when I was going to uni, obviously, Tom was anxious about me going and being in a party lifestyle in first year, of course. You're going to think that when I'm in first year. Um, I didn't get into the uni that I wanted to, so I went through clearing. I got into Leeds Beckett, Sheffield Hallam, and then I got into York. So obviously York's the best out of all of them. It's like a Russell Group uni. And I really, I really, really didn't want to come to York, but he was like pushing me and saying like, come on, like you should go to York. Like this is the best uni like for your degree, which it was in the country at the time. Um, but even though he was going to be anxious about that, I was going to be putting myself in a situation where he was going to be anxious. He pushed me into doing it. He pushed me into going to the uni that was the furthest away from him because he wanted what was best for me. You don't tell people what they can and can't do because you think that's what's best for them. I feel like going to nightclubs is the best for you. No. Of course not. So, <laughs> but it's not. Uh, well, nightclubs isn't a lifestyle. The point, but listen, is the a point you just made is that he did something good, which was he, he, he was anxious and he pushed you to do something good, like something positive. Yeah. I mean, like moving to Liverpool. I'm talking about Liverpool in this situation. But would you say that that's that's positive um what pushing me into living there or not not living there i think there's positives and negatives for both mm. but i don't think that you ever did any of these things to hurt me like I do think you played games, but I don't think it was a big game to like make me fall in love with you. That that wasn't the plan. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like we were seeing each other for like eight months before we even got into a relationship. Hmm. What games do you think I played? Um, I think you just kind of. I don't know if you did it subconsciously or not. Like I, I don't think you played games actively. If that makes sense. Um. I just think you kind of tried to like keep me on my toes and stuff. I feel like you knew how scared I was for you to leave me. And you did play on that by constantly saying like literally every day you'd be like, Oh, I'm online. And I remember when I was here and we were talking about you coming to visit me and one day on FaceTime, you'd be like, Oh, like, don't not let me come. Like make sure I come. Like we're going to have such a nice time and all this. And then you were like, oh, like, look at train times and I'll book it tonight. And then we got onto a FaceTime and you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm back close to the line again. And it was like this, like, every single day I was in York. Like, one day you're like, oh, yeah, I'll definitely come. Like, don't let me not come. And the next day you're like, oh, I'm too close. Like, oh, no, I can't even see us being together on the 19th, which, I mean, you were right. So, well done. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's just... I don't know if you, I think it was probably subconscious, but I do think that you were aware of how scared I was for you to leave me. And I think you did, you did play on it. Because you can't, you can't have not been when you were saying the things that you were saying and I was feeling the things that I was feeling. It wasn't, when I was saying that stuff, it was because we, we had a very, very honest and, and open relationship. We didn't hide because we have done saying this to each other that these were like the uncomfortable conversations that most people will just keep to themselves if they had this thought of like, oh, I don't really feel yeah. so confident in our relationship and stuff. They'd, they'd keep it to themselves and then they'd kind of stay together for a longer period of time, but it'd be mm -hmm. unideal. We never did that. Like I, 
we both made it like such a such a big intention to like just fully say what was on our mind that was me saying it. it wasn't me saying it in like oh i bet this is gonna hurt her i bet this is gonna make her anxious because i didn't want that effect but it was more so me saying it because i was hoping that you'd just be able to kind of say the right things to me and say that you know you cared about me you wanted to be with me and that you could see us together that would warm me up to to it as well but that, this is what I mean. This is when I said, like, I didn't think you had any empathy because I would say this a lot of the times. And I, I don't remember a single time that I would say something like this. Like, essentially, I was saying I don't feel confident in our relationship right now because of whatever. I don't remember a single time where you were able to, like, or you even put in a, a, a okay amount of effort to, to change my mind. Whereas the times you never really said something like this, but I could imagine if you did, I'd be, like, all over you. I'd be, like telling you just so much stuff about our plans together and I'd get your mind off that and I'd get you like feeling confident. I would say those things, I would say those things to you. Mm-hmm. I would always try to reassure you. I feel like you're painting this as if I was just like, oh, you feel insecure, like, what do you want me to do about it? But that was never the case at all. I got so upset over your, like, but I, I would always feel, I felt insecure a lot of the time, the end of our relationship, but I, like, we were so sensitive to each other's emotions, like, you said it before, you're like, if you felt insecure, I'd feel insecure, but you felt insecure so, like, so much of the time towards the end, and maybe it's because I was here and you were at home, um, I mean, yeah, that was definitely the reason, but, um, because that's when it started yeah, coming out, like, the incompatibility, and I think that's yeah. why, one, we had distance between us, and, yeah, distance, I mean, it's hard for everyone, but obviously, if, at least for me, like, distance is like, it, it kills, the, there is no relationship with distance, in my opinion, like, for me, other people can say, oh, you know, they're, they're fine with it, they can do long distance, they can be away from each other, but for me, it's like, my relationship yes. is literally physically being around each other, like, 24-7, and maybe maybe it's not healthy, whatever, that, that, that's me. You like, can't expect that all the time. Yeah. I don't think that is healthy. Some are both unhealthy because that's, honestly, that's what you wanted. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> we were unhealthy it isn't together, and it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that I was. I was perfect. Like neither of us were. We both made mistakes. Mm. We both have a lot to learn from. I know that I definitely do. I know that you definitely do. Whether you take it and learn from it, I don't know. That's completely your choice, but. What do you think what? your learning lessons are? Um, or what do you think mine should be? Good. And then I'll tell you what I think you, yours should be. Um, you go first. <laughs> I was going to think of him as you were talking. <laughs> I was going to think of him as you were talking. <laughs> Give me a second. I'm really thirsty now. <laughs> Let me read my notes. <laughs> <laughs> What was the question again? So <sighs> what? what something we should both learn? You've got short term memory loss recently, mate. I do have short term memory loss. <laughs> I have a really bad memory. <sighs> You've got short term short term memory loss because you can't even remember mm. <laughs> your question. No, I was thinking of a different question, but I don't know if I want to ask that one. Mm. Go on. My heart started beating fast. Nah, I'm not asking it. I'll start crying. God, no, please. You can't nah. say that and then not ask it. <laughs> nah. Ask it. Go on. Have you started dating anyone else? <laughs> <laughs> not dating anyone else. Yeah. I feel you moved on very quick. I was surprised to see that. Um, do you want me to be honest with you? I was very upset for the first week. I was like literally a mess. I, I couldn't be on my own. I literally wasn't on my own for a whole week. Um, and then obviously I had my dissertation to write. Oh yeah, like literally we broke up and my dissertation was due like two weeks afterwards and I hadn't started writing it. I was like, oh my God, like what has my life become? Um, so I think I kind of suppressed it. Mm. Um yeah for all that time and then when I submitted my dissertation it like kind of hit me all over again as if it had just happened so yeah didn't move on quick what makes you think that I moved on quickly 
I remember I started being a little social media retard and I was um like I, I just kept on going on your page. I like I, I know the advice. I give that advice to, to everyone. Like st- don't you know block her, don't go on a page, don't do anything. But I, it was like I automatically when we were messaging each other on Instagram, I'd do it and then I'd see your follower account go up and I was thinking, okay, she hasn't obviously met these guys in person. So within a day of breaking up or a couple of days, it's like she's back on the dating apps. And that made me like I, was, I didn't I didn't get dating apps until like maybe two or three weeks after we broke up. And I don't even use them. I downloaded them but I don't use them. I'm not sure about that because unless you just randomly like followed a couple of guys who are your type because I saw it and I was like oh like fuck it like she moved on quick where um, I can't remember who I followed I remember I followed Joe back after mm. we broke up because obviously he's my friend <laughs> so I followed him back but I can't remember who else I followed but it was never like that but I mean I was doing the exact same thing as you so. mm. <laughs> and I saw your follower can't go up yeah, but not by much, though. I didn't really, like... How much did mine go up by? Mm, I think it's almost, like, 40. Like, I, I, I don't know why I'm pretending, because I know exactly the number. <laughs> 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 I've, I've got the scoreboard right here. I've been, like, tallying it every day. Like, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> you started at 555. Five, five. I mean, it was an easy number to remember, in it? And I, you're on, like just under 600 like i haven't actually looked through it recently well Well, you were on like 111 because i remember you were on 112 and then you went down to 111 and i remember thinking hmm has he done that on purpose so i'm like angel number (laughs) (laughs) no i didn't even think of that (laughs) but But yeah no um when when was the last time that you did that? What? Social media stalks. So recently, as I've been messaging you for the podcast, I'd, I'd go, I've clicked on your name, but I haven't clicked on your follower account. So I, I don't know if I was expecting to see like a picture of you like sucking dick or something. <laughs> but I was, I don't know. Like, yeah, like, I look through your follow account, I think, probably probably like five, ten times over the couple of days after we broke up. And then after a certain amount of time, I think by the time, because like, I blocked you for a little bit, I think by that point, then I just stopped looking. And I was like, yeah, because to be honest, you, you started grinding for the dissertation. I literally started grinding for the business because it all started yeah. popping at this point. I was putting in like eight hours of deep work like unimaginable levels of deep work and shit <laughs> and so I, I literally i went celibate i went like you literally made me like asexual like I, i'm not even interested anymore like i don't even need women I've, I've reached a higher level where i just levitate and <laughs> i'm in monk mode now <laughs> <laughs> how long can you celibate for probably a high score mate hmm? It's probably a high score now. Have you seen anyone since we broke up? I met one woman, but I didn't exactly like do that. I was just like two days ago, but I didn't exactly like, do anything with her. Just like kissed, and other than that, like just kept to myself. I, I like I was the the usual stuff. I, like I, what my mind wanted me to do was to get on the apps ASAP and start like sleeping with girls again. And I yeah. thought, I just got a feeling of like, nah, like I'm for this time, like I'm not purposely going to go and like rebound and like do that shit. I'm just, I'm actually going to accept the feeling of like the de- disattachment and like the breakup feeling without trying to cover it with someone new. So I've, I've literally just kept yeah. to myself, like apart from meeting this one girl, nothing. I've literally done the exact same, like, I just kind of, like, after the breakup, like, obviously straight away, you're like, oh, like, not straight away, but, like, after a bit of time, you're like, oh, I'm going to get back on dating apps, I'm just going to see loads of people, I'm just not even going to, like, think about him, I'm just going to distract myself with, like, so many other people, but I just, like, I downloaded the dating apps, and, like, I just, I just don't reply to people, <laughs> like, I just never, ever, ever reply to people. I just don't, I just don't have interest, honestly. I just don't have an interest in it. Like, 
so I'm kind of the same, like kind of turned asexual, I guess. Mm. Um, and was just not even interested at all. And I mean, I'm still not. Yeah. Yeah, we're both in, still in love with each other. Pardon? We're both still in love with each other. Do you think? I think, at least for me, it's like, I've not wanted to... I've wanted to view everything more negatively so that it hurts less. But Yeah, me too. Judging of how like our actions have been and how with it, like, it's just it's becoming so clear to me. It, I, because I don't think that me and you even like broke up. Like we we have broken up, but I don't think that I broke up with you or you broke up with me. I think it was just a weird situation where your family broke up with us. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. That's if, what for example, was. that didn't happen, you wouldn't have broken up with me just then. Even if you had it in mind, like, oh, you know, the, no. the manipulation video, the boundaries or whatever, you wouldn't have, and I wouldn't have either. Like, we would have no. literally died together. Fucking <laughs> 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 done. <laughs> <laughs> you would have got to the point where you swallowed the key. <laughs> <laughs> I locked myself inside with you. <laughs> but neither of us are leaving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does it make you sad when you think about it? On it, like I'll be completely honest. The only thoughts I've had have been like resentful ones, not even like hostile ones, not not sad ones, and not positive ones. I think my mind just keeps generating reasons to be like mad. It's like my, like before I came onto this call, I was like thinking like. Let me write down all these points why he's a dick. <laughs> if I fucking hate him. <laughs> um, but it's like, like I remember I was speaking to my friends about the like, oh, like I don't want you to go on thinking it's going to be like a nice conversation. And I was like, oh no, it probably won't be. But like, I wouldn't say it's been like a necessarily not nice conversation. Like I think we've both been fairly respectful to each other. Yeah. And I think like, when it's like when the person becomes not a person anymore they just become like an image in your head mm. that's what you became for me yeah that's a very very good because i i feel like the same way but i can't exactly describe it but it's it's i, I honestly can't even describe it how how i feel towards you because i is it good the, or bad? I, I, I said this to you last time it was like huh is it good or bad <laughs> both up until this call it was like 100% bad not like horrible horrible but like just every now and then I'd, like, I'd be brushing my teeth like oh that fucking bitch like, just, <laughs> <laughs> my, like, oh, that, she got big ass forehead why would you date a girl with that big ass forehead like, but I think now that we spoke and especially because we haven't been like hostile with you. I mean, you probably did start a little bit hostile. Like, oh yeah, do you manipulative? You control? I was like, fuck it up. But after that, <laughs> since I mean, I still, I've still got more. I've not said. Still so got still more. I've not said. Okay. So we don't need to read this shit. <laughs> I wrote no. mine in my relationship journal. Still been using this one. Oh. <sighs> I. Literally straight after we broke up, the relationship journal, the attachment book, anything that reminded me of you literally just that got thrown to the back of the wardrobe. I couldn't look at it. I couldn't meditate for weeks. I couldn't journal for weeks. I've only just been able to listen to some of our songs. Yeah. Only just. But what songs, like what are like proper like trigger songs for you? I wonder if they're the same. Red Stripe, Rapid Z. Yeah, that, yeah. I haven't listened to because as soon as we broke up I went on we had like a joint playlist I went on that and just like removed myself from it because I knew that it would be like so hurtful I removed you from it nah I left from it um, or you might have like well, I, I, I might have actually just like taken off the playlist off my Spotify but you probably like saw my account on there you probably like removed me like that but I like stopped I removed you up yeah so I couldn't I removed see. you up then I added you back on so you're back on it just now. in case he wants to add any more tunes <laughs> still adding songs to it <laughs> um, 
I've, I've, like, I've literally like, just been this. listening to Drill over the last month. I think about fucking stabbing this bitch. <laughs> 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 what are the songs? Um, the late night vibe. Oh, I don't know the exact names of them, but there was like you know the female artists, a bunch of them like warm pants, obviously. Twenty four. Um, <laughs> uh, I've not even listened to warm pants. Oh my god, I'm not gonna be able to listen to that. Came on, and I was like, um, I actually changed it. I was like, Nah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I don't need that. Yeah, I'll get a semi. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. No. Which ones is it for you? Um 24k. That's a big one. Which one is that? That um I can see the picture. Right? That one. You know it. Yeah. I'm trying to think of others. I can think of one that would be, but I'm never going to listen to it ever again. That Fall In For You one. Oh, yeah. No, no, I'm good. I'm, I haven't listened to that, but yeah. I'm, it, I'm no. never listening to that ever again. Because <laughs> we actually said um, that, that was like our song, didn't we? Yeah, it was. Wasn't Looking, that's another one. I've not even listened to that one. I won't be able to. Because that was another one that we said was literally us in a song. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> just can't yeah. listen to any good songs anymore now. <laughs> Isn't it? That's the thing. Oh. I think that's the thing that was pissing me off the most about the breakup. Like, not being able to listen to music. Like, I literally didn't listen to music for, like, weeks. Mm. I'm, gonna, I'm actually, like, I've been avoiding it thinking like oh you know make me think about her but now i'm like yeah maybe think about her fucking like I, I want the songs to come on now because i was for the first time yesterday instead of just listening to drill or like an audiobook i was coming home from kickboxing and i went through i usually like don't ever do this but i like <laughs> love the <laughs> <laughs> i went off the the drill playlist and i went to the chill rap one and i scrolled on that and I, I haven't listened to that because that's the one which we originally started listening to when we first started like seeing each other where it was like come through and chill and everything. Brent Fire oh as ex- oh, I, when Exchange came on and I was I was still making the noises <laughs> by myself and I was just imagining you like looking at me weird when I was doing the ad list. <laughs> oh, that's so weird. I think of the exact same thing when that song comes up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so a though. I think songs like that, like Exchange, like I've listened to that a few times since we broke up and I did think of like that moment, but I think because I listened, I think Good ones before. that I listened to before you yeah. are fine. They're okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Agreed. Like the start of that, I remember it being like, it would make me think, but then I've listened to that song for like, like that was like one of my go-to songs anyway. And so it was just kind of like, it was reminded me of like other stuff. It was like mm-hmm. being back in Manchester and everything. So it was, yeah. it's like an emotional song for me in general. But the ones with you mm-hmm. specifically, are like the ones that, they're the playlists we made. And it's like that whole like, playlist. Yeah. Like we've got like four playlists like that. Can't even like look on Spotify anymore. I have to like <laughs> click on the, the drill playlist like that. Like not look at anything else. <laughs> do, you, do you listen to the journaling playlist anymore? Yeah. Do you? Like, did that not make you sad to start with? It gets me in my feelings. It gets me like deep thoughts because I've always u- what, I used. Was it for, like... just in it's hard to say because it'd be somewhat in general. Like I don't get an overwhelming sense of like thinking about you, but at the same time, like. I think I've only journaled, like I've journaled about some, some of the stuff, I've pretty much only journaled about you since like the last month or so, because it's been like the thing on my mind. I've journaled about maybe mm-hmm. like two, three other stuff. That's about it. And so... Have you journaled about me much since we broke up? Did I not just say that, Rita? <laughs> yeah, but like, much. Yeah, but you said you could have only journaled three times since we broke up. Yeah. Um, third, we broke up while like... Start of May. 
think it Just was. Just May. Fuck, it's actually been a while. I think it was right? the 12th of May. Yeah. April. So this was 28th of April. 10 things I'm grateful about. You. Okay, let's not read that. <laughs> yeah, let's not read that one. 7th of May. Um, this is me talking about like, social media and everything. 8th of May. Well, May it happened, I think. Eleventh of May was like the last time we we spoke, and this was when I wrote like we were on Facetime, and I wrote like a a letter to you whilst you were talking on Facetime, and I was saying you've got to stop indulging in your emotions, baby. You've been practicing mindfulness and gratitude for months, and then the next one is just we broke up, <laughs> and then twenty. How many we got? Twenty six reasons why, like I think you, you were trash. <laughs> Twenty six reasons why I was trash. <laughs> One reason after me. I want to. I nah, want to get it. Like, hmm. You'll literally start crying. <laughs> no, we're good. No, go on. Go on. I want to. I think that's all the time we've got for the podcast. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I still got a load of things I need to say. But go on. Eighteenth of May. I, I got. <laughs> like, I wasn't even joking before, you know, debating celibacy. <laughs> I have for like, whilst I was. No, nah, I'm not going to read this. Why? I mean, there's some Why? emotional stuff on this. A letter to future Hamza. No matter what your connection with her, do not forget about her found. Do not forget about the foundation which your relationship is built upon. I think that's like the main thing. Like no matter how much we get on, no matter how like compatible we are, like we have different values in terms of relationships, so it would never work. Mm. Bad. Yeah, agreed. Well, I just think like everything is a life lesson. Like everyone come, like, comes into your life to teach you a lesson, like good things, bad things. Like, like after we broke up, I literally just wanted to have fucking brain shock therapy and have my memory wiped of you like completely. I didn't want to know who you were. I didn't want to like anything. I just completely wanted to be like rid of you. But now that I'm like over it, not like I'm not fully over it. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm not even nearly there I don't think um you're not over it no why <laughs> you still love me Pardon? Pardon? you, you still, still love me, me to be this. <laughs> you're a pussy <laughs> you're a pussy all right boys 100 yeah. likes on the podcast and me and you will get back together <laughs> 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 Smash that like button, guys. <laughs> Rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Don't do <it> in there. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. I do you reckon know. that's because of closure or just in general? Like, yeah. Definitely. That's why I've done this. That's why I've agreed to do it. Mm. Because obviously, like, when we broke up, you asked to meet up, and I said no. Mm. because I just I just needed to like 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 I said I wanted to forget that you existed so I just needed to like and it's like it, I don't think you understand like I think you seem to think that because I was quite like like quite not ignorant but like I wasn't really willing to like have a conversation with you after we broke up like at all but I think that you and I would do the same if it was like roles reverse. I'd like assume that that means that like, oh, the other person's moved on, like it's fine. But it was just, it was just too painful. It was just way too painful. So mm -hmm. that's why I was, when we broke up, I was like, no, like I can't meet up with him. Like I can't even have a FaceTime with him. I was like, like we've broken up, like we've had a few days of no contact. I was like, I can't go back to that now. But then like, obviously over time I've realized like, I do need that closure and I've been trying to figure out how to say what I like needed to say to you. Cause obviously you wrote me that letter and I said that I'd let you know how I felt. And then like a month later still hasn't said anything. Um, 
so and then I was still trying to figure out how to tell you how I felt and then you asked me to do this so I was like let me let me just jump on this real quick and just really <laughs> yeah mm, I'm glad that, you um, this. me too did it hurt you when I was like hesitant to talk to you afterwards no not at all actually because really yeah, I, I actually did understand it and I, d- I didn't really view it because by this point I'd, I'd stopped like checking on Instagram. I was just back to in the business instantly productivity went up, business was growing and everything. And so I was just busy mm-hmm. and I was, I just, I honestly at this point I went into like this monk mode period where I just went like celibate. I didn't even want to think about girls for a bit. I was, like, yeah, so I, I didn't even view it negatively at all. I, I figured it was your way of like coping with it. And yeah. I'll be honest, after the, when I sent you like a long message, we were like, we weren't going to meet in person. So I wrote the letter and I just sent you like a three page letter and recorded it all on voice note. Literally the moment like I said that. It wasn't three pages. It oh. was like seven. <laughs> <laughs> but after literally the moment I sent it, I was like, that was my closure. Honestly, it, was, it kind of felt yeah. like I didn't exactly need to, to hear back from you because mm-hmm. I needed to say my piece and I knew that hearing your piece it would be like for you not for me yeah so I, I got mine That's, and I was like I, I just dipped after that yeah I was literally I think that's why I found it hard to move on because I haven't ever like given myself that yeah that's honestly that's what it was for it was like me saying it helped me and I think if you said it, it would have helped you it might have like worsened it for me you know hearing how like you felt and you if you said anything bad or if you said even good stuff about me it would have like emotionally affected me whereas it just feels relieving to like say what needs to be said and so I'm very very glad that I just wrote that massive letter sent it over to you because straight after that I just start like I clearly like haven't fully moved on or anything I don't think either of us have but at least it was like Mm. some sort of closure yeah it was at least like like... close the chapter in it yeah, of course. I think that's why I've struggled because I haven't had that. And I mean, that's my own fault. Mm. But I just, I couldn't have met up with you. Like, I just couldn't. <laughs> I wanted to Pack more than blanket. anything, but I just couldn't. <laughs> Come to meet me and start packing the blanket. <laughs> I probably would have done it. Can we get uh, <laughs> do it Oasis, please, and extra napkins? <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I dropped my notebook. Um yeah. I'm gonna just look over this and see because I'm gonna be really annoyed at myself if I haven't said anything that I want to say. Um Yeah, sorry to take it from like a positive note to back to a negative from a negative to a negative note, but I think like the day that we broke up I saw a very different side to you. That I'd never seen before. Like I understand, like I, I can understand why you were like laughing and smiling. And I don't think I was aggressive towards you on that FaceTime call. I think, like, I wouldn't be surprised if it came across that way because obviously it's like my whole family were like kicking off at you. You're gonna think that I was being aggressive, but I wasn't being aggressive at all. And when you were smiling, I remember I literally said to you exactly like this: like, this isn't a laughing situation, Hamza. Like, this is horrible. And I think that, like, that did hurt me that you were smiling because to me it seemed as though it didn't matter to you. Like, if it was roles reversed and say I was in that situation where your family were, like, really upset with me, I wouldn't be sat there smiling no matter how awkward I felt. I'd literally be in tears, like, please like, let me explain. And obviously I didn't hear the conversation between you and my granddad, so I don't know what was said, but... um yeah, it just kind of hurt me to see that you were smiling because it made me feel like you didn't care. And I was in apps, like, I mean, you saw the mess I was in. Um, it's interesting that you, like, that- you perceived me smiling as, as negative because my, my smile yeah. wasn't my... It wasn't, like, me smiling at the situation. It was me smiling at the girl I'm in love with and actually, it's like, seeing her for the first time in a little while in a stressful situation. It was... It was, yeah it was me smiling at you not at the situation like the situation was making me tense and, and uncomfortable but the moment i see you it's like i always smile 
and it, it hurt when you instantly took that as like an insult and you like you you it was like now it felt at first it felt like me and you versus everyone then it felt like you plus everyone versus me because then yeah. you started like you were like doing the gun fingers and shit and like oh, <laughs> manipulated me i was fucking type of grooming gang i'm so like <laughs> Oh fuck it up. Yeah. <laughs> My would say, he said that you agree with me. He still believes that now. But like I don't blame him. Honestly, it's like sudden. you see that video, you see me like getting girls and stuff, it's like I couldn't understand his perception of that. It's obviously it's not yeah. right, but it's like I was And it isn't for like a while for that, but yeah. Pardon? What'd you say? I was like resentful for the perception that I was the image that was put onto me for the, all this that I was like grooming you, I was manipulating you. But mm. and I said that myself. Like, I said that you weren't grooming me. Yeah. Like I think you did. You did manipulate me. Like you've even kind of admitted it to admitted to having somewhat manipulated me in the past. Like when we weren't together. Obviously, when it was just like mm. seeing each other. But, um, but he's saying this I think, without actually having like without having to try and convince someone first. Oh, by but but by the way, like manipulation is kind of how humans interact anyway, and so you've got to not use manipulation. Yeah, yeah in a way. Of word. In a way, yeah. But I think you have a very negative view of my family. No. Yeah, I do. I very very negative. Yeah, and I can understand why you have that view, but like. It in different so like I didn't ever expect for this to happen. Like I'm, I was just as like confused as you. I was so confused, but I've never ever ever seen my granddad like that before. Mm. I think he was just very. I think it was the the pictures that you included in the video. I don't think it was necessarily. I think it was what you were saying about me, of course, and I think it was the, it was the comparison it was when you were talking about the experiments with rats and pigeons and he's like he's comparing a woman no that's such a like useless point honestly it's we, we, i know we, like it might be a useless point but you have to think like this is someone who's nearly in their 70s like a completely different generation doesn't know what youtube is has seen a video of you saying oh this is how i manipulate girls into getting what i want and then all the things that had happened. Of course, he's going to see it in a negative way. Like, my granddad, he's my granddad, but he's like my dad. He's raised me. If he thinks that there's some, a guy that's, like, like showing some form of danger towards me, of course he's going to react in a horrible way because that's his job. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. that's why, although I have, like, a negative thought towards, like, the situation, your family, but... I don't exactly like I'm I'm offended but I understand I think that's the, the way yeah. it is I, I'm pissed off that me and you we didn't get the autonomy like we didn't get the freedom to make this choice because I think that it put us in like a weird situation where we didn't yeah, get cool. to like break up with each other which would have been the best case scenario it was like, it was like forced yeah, it's like upon the situation us. With us yeah yeah it, like we didn't. Yeah, get, and I like, agree. No, that like that wasn't fair. And the last no. conversation we had is, you know, you go up to your room so we can speak on Facetime, and, and then your granddad can... walks straight up as well, and he's he still stood there, yeah, like talking aggressively to me. But at that point, but it's like thing, that's yeah, so so respectful. If if it's going to be your last conversation in a relationship, you you deserve to at least have two minutes to say goodbye to each other and to like yeah. to end it. And your granddad's literally just, like looking at me well, saying, "You cock!" Like. <laughs> you so, I mean, like it's it's kind yeah. of funny now, but it it's not something I'd expect at the time. Him, it was like I'm not going to sound like a dickhead, but it's not something I'd expect him to say in person because that that's that's man to man. That's very offensive, man to man. You don't say that type of shit to someone, and especially not if you you think this guy. I didn't hear it. Manipulating. I didn't hear whatever was said to say. What is to to look at someone and say like start swearing at them, like okay, say that I've done something wrong. Fine. But if you start swearing at me, like, that is not just an insult. It's like, it's a threat at that point. Yeah. And you can say... I mean, I, I can't comment on that because I didn't hear him. I, I didn't hear him. 
Mm. I can't comment on that because I didn't hear him. And if he did swear, like, I don't think he should have done. But then they, they didn't know you. They didn't know the good sides to you. All they saw was this bad. Mm. And that's, that's so why course, I've, I've got negative views of them. Is there's a hundred videos on my channel, a hundred videos of me talking about mental health, of me talking about helping these guys, thousands of comments of guys saying that I've helped them. But thousands. the issue isn't about One how video, you can help guys. They judged literally my whole like person my yeah. every the person i am they've judged me from one video not even just one video the title of of the video i've been i've been mm. branded as a manipulator because i made a video on manipulation like that is that's true but you have to think their interest isn't their interest isn't how well you can help young men i'm not a young man who's being helped by you i was a girl that was in a relationship with you so their concern is going to be your views towards women which from that video your views towards women seem very negative because I believe they were very negative at that time. Whether they are now or not, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's like when we were in a relationship, like I remember I'd say to you all the time, like the guy that you were when for the majority of the time that we knew each other, even though like the time we were spending together was like still the same, like we were still getting on the same, it seemed like you were a completely different guy. Like I... I wasn't in love with that guy. I was in love with the guy I was in a relationship with. Mm. But like, when this is a video that you've posted on the internet, people can't differentiate. People aren't in the people aren't in the relationship. The only people that were in the relationship is me and you. So they they didn't know the extent of the good. And like, I've spoken to my grandparents afterwards. Like, I've spoke to my nana. Like. She said, like, he was, like, a very positive influence. Like, I do think he was a good guy. Like, he wanted what was best for you, but he's, he's just got some fucked up views. I think you do, like, whether you do now or not, but I think in the past you have had some very, very, very negative views towards women. Like, you even said to me yourself that you hated women. No. Do you still? No. That was a long time ago, and I'm glad I've experienced that. That it's a transition that these guys are going through, and and it, it's a lot more common than most people think it is. A, the majority of young guys hate women because the world's yeah. against them. Women are against them. They don't understand how women work, and when they do try and find out, they're branded as creeps. They're branded as like weirdos and misogynists and and incels and all this shit. And. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not exactly like something fair to say it's like oh he's he's got such a negative view because i have to counter and say like, yeah but everyone does is when if, for example a girl says oh men are trash which for example you've at least either said that before or you've like had that feeling before like oh these guys are just dicks that's that's horrible that's toxic and every so we can yeah, say every girl every mod like middle um my age girl like 20 year old girl is toxic but then that's just a stupid conclusion to make and at that point we can say okay either everyone's toxic or we are now at the baseline where the baseline is toxic and above that is baseline. like something else yeah. above that is like misogynist or some shit and extremely extremely toxic and abusive and abusive and i wasn't there i was about here but i was i was making videos for, honestly i was about here making videos for people who were about here but i'm like i'm at the level if this is my ego i don't know but i'm at the level where i'm, I'm past the normal level of toxicity. I'm at like the acceptance stage where like I understand how this stuff works because I've spent five years researching it. Like I've done more than a, a master's degree of how of behavioral science of how men and women interact with each other. I don't know. I I don't think I. I mean, obviously, yeah, you've done the the work behind it, but I don't agree with that. I think from my experience on what a healthy relationship is and when I've spoken to people about what their view of a healthy relationship is, like all the things that you said to me weren't healthy. Not all the things, like all the things that we're talking about. Do you know what I mean? All the bad things. But so I was, I wasn't good either. I wasn't great. You, things that you said were worse, I think, but I wasn't great either. Mm. yeah like your boundaries boundaries um, were much more extreme than mine pardon 
Put his fingers down. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, my boundaries were more extreme. That's because I was doing less of the things that would make you anxious. So naturally, mine would be more restrictive. True, but I wasn't going out clubbing. Clubs aren't even open. Then, then what was the, the problem through all this? If I was saying this and you were like, oh, it's still to this day, you say, like, oh, I didn't even want... There you go, boys, we got... <laughs> <laughs> so boys. She dipped out of the call. She had nothing to say for that one. <laughs> yeah. Um. I. You have really bad trust issues. Mm like really bad and I remember when we used to have conversations and this would usually be when I was not empathetic towards your insecurities I think this would always pretty much always be the situation where that would happen where we'd get onto the conversation of trust and you'd say um oh like I wouldn't ever cheat on you but it could happen he's like like say if we were in a bad patch and like a girl approached me, like it could happen. Like I could see myself doing it. Mm. And when I would turn around and say to you, it wouldn't happen. Like it, it would never, ever, ever. And no matter what bad patch we were in, it would never happen. And you would say, no, like you're not being truthful. Like it could happen. Of course it could happen. But I'm not going to say it could happen when it wouldn't. And I, I believe now and I said this to you at the time as well, and I think this is probably why I used to get so upset. Well, it is why I used to get so upset. Um, I felt like your lack of trust in me was a reflection of yourself. Because in your brain, it seemed physically capable for you to cheat on me. Whereas in my brain, it, it, wasn't, even, it wasn't even part of it. Like me and my ex-boyfriend, like, you know what we went through. Like, we went through some of the worst patches you could have ever imagined. Not once did I ever cheat on him. I was still going to nightclubs. I would have guys approach me in nightclubs, turn around and tell them to F off. Like, not once did I even think about it in a three-year relationship where we were having some of the worst patches. Like, obviously, I'm not going to go into it, but some of the worst patches you could have ever, ever, ever imagined. And not once did I think about it. And I think that I think that's why I became unempathetic because I would get frustrated that you, I felt like you weren't believing me when I was saying that I would never cheat on you when I wouldn't have. Like no matter what bad patch we were in, like no matter whether you cheated on me, which like I wouldn't be, still be with you, but say if you had cheated on me and we had stayed together or anything, like no no amount of being in a bad patch would ever, ever, ever change my values and my morals. And my values and my morals are that you don't cheat on someone that you're with. Like, I think that's like lowest of the low, like absolute scum. Like anyone who cheats, like it, it, it just doesn't make, it honestly makes no sense to me at all. Like why are you going to hurt the person that you're supposed to be in love with? And I think that's why I was unempathetic because to me it was physically like, it wasn't even a possibility that I'd cheat on you. Not even like if anything had happened, whereas to you, when you were saying to me, oh, um, when you'd say to me, oh, my brain's broke. <laughs> when you'd say to me that it was possible for you to do it I think that's what hurt me because it felt like your lack of trust was a reflection of your mm. possible like unfaithfulness mm. that could be it's hard for me to like fully say but I mean I do hear that that's something that happens with people is if they feel untrustworthy themselves then they think the other person's untrustworthy so that could have yeah. but then <laughs> I mean, it, it could have. It's hard for me to like say yes or no, but when instantly I thought about my first girlfriend and I felt the same way. And after reading more about some things about relationships, something stuck out to me recently, and it said that I, I don't know if I'm just using this as some kind of basic excuse, but it did say like you you get the you expect the love that you got from your parents, and it does seem like to be generally true and somewhat I think that my expectations of, of like anxiousness and broken love reflects my childhood experiences of, of somewhat of like an abusive house 
And that's my, my view of relationships because I've never exactly trusted anyone I've been with because it's not, it's not an insult on you and your faithfulness. It's more, I can't imagine how anyone would be faithful to me. Do you think that you would have cheated on me? No. But this is a different question to what originally we were speaking about, though. The I know, but I that just came have, into my head. I thought yeah, I'd no, no, like no. Nah. I was like madly in love with you, like not even in love, not just like normal people love. Like I was on the extreme level. Like there was not even like I, w- I was going to say there's not a possibility, but that's that's false. The reason why you, when you ask me, oh, is there a chance? Like. I, I don't believe anyone could say that, oh, no, there's no chance whatsoever. I think that consciously it sounds so nice to think like, oh, no, no, 100%, I'm, it's not going to happen. But I think that, are you literally saying that there's like a 0% chance? There's almost nothing has a 0% chance, almost. Mm-hmm. And so there is like a 0. Point something percent chance for it to happen when, for yeah. example, I, I think we're going to break up anyway. And you've, you've cheated on me, you've hurt me, or we're, we're, you know, something's like shit has happened. I think we're going to break up. Mm-hmm. And someone's like entered my life at this point and they've said the right things and I'm feeling the right emotions. Like it can happen. And yeah, I course. wasn't empathetic to, your, to you because this, this, now that I say it like this, makes me think that this was a very like analytical, logical way to think about mm-hmm. probability and shit instead of thinking about how you when, do it with emotions, which is, oh shit, he just said that he could cheat on me. Whereas I was th- like, I was thinking like, hmm, is there more than a zero point? Is it like greater than sign a, a 0% chance? Like, I guess there would be like, let me add up all the variables. Like, and the thing is, if you do that, you have to be a liar to say like, oh no, it's still going to be zero. You have to be because yeah, of course. the person can hurt you. It so could much. Happen. Yeah. So then. But the thing is like, like it could happen of course and thank you like for saying that because I think that is a, a big thing that made me feel insecure in our relationship was how you would always say that but it's like yeah but if it wouldn't happen it couldn't like of course it could happen like of course but, like, when you, you were asking me like oh could it happen like like could you see yourself cheating? yeah but I'm not asking you could it I'm asking you would it but no, you but never used to ask that though because you used to ask that like like you did today like a little bit later and I'd say no. And then you get confused. You'd be like, but you just said that. Because you... <laughs> you're asking me to. I feel like questions. in my head, like... could it happen is like you physically thinking, would it happen? Yeah. I wasn't thinking about the probabilities. I never even thought of it like that until you said it. Yeah. I think the thing is like, <laughs> people who are going to cheat are going to cheat regardless of what environment they're in. Mm. Like, no, nah, no, that is so true. Nah, that nah, is so disagree. true. Like that girl, the girl at the gym rings. All she did was go for a walk and she cheated on her boyfriend. Nah. All she did was go for a walk. Serial, like, of course it's, of course it's easier in a club. Pardon? Serial cheaters will, but without, I'd have to go into like vulgar detail to explain how it truly happens. But through my experiences, which I've told the boys as well, and it, to be honest, if we're like two hours into the podcast, I can speak pretty unfiltered. So I've told the boys, and I think I've told you as well, about half of my the girls that I've been with have been with have had boyfriends and through this experience the same thing always pops into my mind is that it is a situation that builds it and there's about like five like triggers of this and problems with the boyfriend is always number one because if you were like very very like you know on our good days we're like proper hugging each other you're not you're not even gonna like it it could not even that's a zero percent day but Mm-hmm. never gonna happen on that day anyway it was gonna go yeah. from zero to like zero 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 point one percent when we think we're gonna break up anyway when you feel close to the line because i've done something stupid or you know something happens if for example on that day like everything went down and we we ended on that day but for example if we didn't but your parents were saying no no you can't be with him but we didn't end on that day then if you went out then if the right attractive guy came and he said like the right mm-hmm. words to you and you were feeling him then the, the probability goes up like the, the situation builds and it, it is yeah it, like the, I why think I that's, was anxious was because the thing yeah. that I was anxious and I had boundaries about was the situation that I could see happening where it is always nighttime at least it's always alcohol related mm-hmm. it's always like female friends related all the girls I've been with it's honestly largely because their their female friends kind of like made it happen and we were all drinking and it was nighttime and she was having problems with the boyfriend and generally i was higher value than the boyfriend now Mm. maybe my big fat ego but it would be difficult 
for you to like see someone who was better than me. But it does happen. Like there are some fucking like good guys out there and some attractive ass guy can approach you and it like it can happen. It's not gonna happen that often and it's quite frankly because it it. it's like it's hard to be better than me. But I've been in bad I've been in bad patches and gone on nights out and not cheated. I've been on I've been in bad patches and gone on nights out and had guys approach me that I found attractive, didn't cheat. That's most of the situ- that's most of the the factors. A couple more factors and it could have like swayed a, in that favor. No no amount of factors. Like I ultimately I can't blame you for feeling this way because I know myself. No one can ever know you to the extent that you know yourself. I know that I'd never do that. Like I'm not asked about going out and getting with guys. Like I literally went to a house party a few days ago. Didn't even think about it. Not didn't even think about it for one second. I went there to be with my friends and to have a nice time with my friends. I didn't go because I want to get with a guy. But this is the tricky part because it's not a conscious decision. It's no. It's, it never is. That's the thing. No one actually thinks to themselves like, "Oh, I'm I'm going to cheat today." That's no, of course thing. not. But it only I would happen never once over five years. When you think about okay, you've, you know you've had the opportunity with your ex, for example, like ten times over the the times you went to the the clubs and stuff. When this keeps happening, but you end up staying together for literally three, four, five years, that's when it starts happening because at that point you've had a hundred situations where it could have happened, and then it only needs mm-hmm. to happen once for the entire thing to to crumble. Now, yeah, that's when I look back on it, I just think like so. The, me from a, a couple of months, like one two months ago, I was just thinking like like. What what benefit? What positive was there for you to even have this this feeling of this foreseeable future to think? Oh, she could cheat on you. It's like why not just act as if she'll never cheat on you and go with that because she'll be less likely to cheat on you and you'll be less likely to break up if you just kind of hold the identity that she never will anyway instead of expressing yeah. that oh it could happen. Like if if, if do you know what I mean? So I like I see it from your point of view because me holding yeah. that that insecurity and that jealousy, it, it's just. It's like autistic. It's just unvaluable in every sense. It it, it doesn't do anything positive, yeah. and all it does is just make it more likely to happen. Because you're obviously going to go through more problems this way. Yeah, of course. Do you think I would have cheated? No, nah. but I mean, if we talk about the probability, <laughs> I could see. I could see like it could happen. Zero point zero 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 percent chance. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Do you I think, think that I was just put him? Do you think I would have? Do you think like I, there was like a pretty big chance, like ten, fifteen percent, like it would have happened over a couple of years? Yeah. Yeah. When we were together, no. But when we broke up, I remember thinking about it, and I was like, "Yeah, this guy would have cheated on me." Hmm. Like. This is going to sound fucking horrible to say, but I'm glad I got out of our relationship when I did. Mm. I'm glad it didn't go on any longer. Although it was painful. It was like literally one of the most painful things I've ever experienced in my whole life. Like it was horrendous. But I was grateful because I've been, I've been debating whether to say this or not for the whole thing, but I'm like, fuck it. Do I just. I. You. I've like read into it and stuff since we broke up because um, I've like struggled. You were showing all of the first signs of abuse. Like what? Controlling, gaslighting. Um, because you got you did gaslight me. You made me feel so guilty, like so guilty. Pardon. It's when you, it's a form of emotional manipulation where you make the person feel like they're like guilty for everything or make them feel like they're like going crazy. And I remember, I, I just heard a noise and I'm home alone. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Yeah, I've literally like my, all my housemates, because I'm back at uni now, if you can't tell. All my housemates have moved out, so I'm just on my once. But what was I even saying? Oh yeah, gaslighting. Um, basically, where you kind of make them not. It is question their sanity, but that's like an extreme 
case. So basically just like when I was at uni, when I came back to York, um, I remember you say to me like, oh, like, you've not reassured me at all since you've been back, which yeah, I messed up and I did that Instagram thing, but like I admitted that was messed up and I shouldn't have done that. But, and you're like, oh, you haven't reassured me. Like you've essentially behaved in the exact way that I was scared of you behaving. But literally every single day I was sending you so many messages. Like you'd wake up every morning to a massive paragraph from me telling me how much I loved you, like voice notes. And you made me feel like I wasn't doing that. And it's only when I came out of the situation, I was like, I was like, what, what else did you expect from me? And it's like, I felt, I felt like I was in the wrong for wanting to go on a night out with my friends once every year or wanting to go and visit my friend in London. I felt like guilty. I was like, oh, like I shouldn't want to do those things anyway. Like it's going to make Hamza anxious, which yeah, to an extent, but you're going to feel anxious in those situations. Like you do feel anxious when your partner goes out. Like I've had that exact thing. I'm like, what if he's cheating on me? What if he's cheating on me? But he's like, no, he's not. That's just the anxious part of my brain that's being stupid. It's not the real belief. Mm. <clears throat> I feel like I've just explained that really, really badly, but... I get your point. I mean, I could be abusive. And I think you are. I'm not saying that to be hurtful. I'm just... Yeah. I think we both have a lot to... Like, this is why I've done this call, because... I think we both have a lot to learn from that we don't even really know because we haven't told each other. Yeah. I think you are abusive, Hamza. Emotionally, anyway. And I remember you saying to me that a few girls have said that to you in the past. Mm, that's what I was thinking. At first, I was thinking, like... It, <laughs> like, oh, women are strange because... <laughs> Strange. the women who have said this are the ones who like me the most and so what what should a guy do if th like this is what women seem to want this is what women are like attracted to because when you've been emotionally abused and manipulated by someone you feel like you have to clean I, I, I can't I know it in my head but I can't fully explain it but it's like mm -hmm. you feel the need to like cling on to them I think you feel more attached to them because they're not constantly giving you good attention all the time it's like when they do it's like you get so attached mm -hmm. like why do people why are people in a relate in an abusive relationship and stay in it for 30 years you get attached I, I promise you this isn't like the way that you need to act to get girls like it's, it's, it's not nice. Like the, the mental damage that you've caused me in just three days of being controlling and abusive, literally it was, it was like everything was so good and it just turned to shit in literally three days. Like I'm not like recovered from that. Like you've really, really damaged me mentally. Like really badly. How? I don't know how to exactly like put it into words, but I don't know. How does it make you feel? Um, depressed and anxious and like, it's, it's not even a feeling I can describe. I wouldn't wish anyone to feel the way that you made me feel. Like my perception okay. of it is that I I just set my boundaries. Like I no. I said that I didn't want to be with a girl who would do X, for example, X. And if you wanted to not exactly like, oh, you know, if you wanted to stay with me, but it was, it was like your conscious decision to think, oh, X is worth less than Hamza, so I'll be with Hamza. So that to me doesn't yeah. seem like it would be like mentally traumatic. No, it was just things over time, like the gaslighting and thinking back to things that you said in the past and just the, like, I don't know, your attitude towards certain things. Like I remember when 
you were meant to have the conversation with my granddad. And I remember I was on the FaceTime call with you and I was crying and I was like, can you please come and have a conversation with him tomorrow? And you were like, no, it's a work day, which I complete, like, I completely understand. Like, yeah, it's a work day. Like work is the priority as you always used to say. Um, but you, it just seemed like you were, you seemed very like insensitive. Like I remember you weren't even like looking at me, you were just doing something on your computer. And I was actually like crying and begging you and being like, please, like I'm, I'm struggling so much. Like I really just need you to have this conversation with him. And I mean, yeah, you agreed in the end, but you were like, no, you like, no, sorry, baby, no. And like that just hurt because I needed that from you so badly. Like. I remember like literally begging you being like, please, like, I need this. Like I, like I need, I literally need you to have this conversation. And I just felt like you were very like insensitive towards it. I don't know. I just felt like I saw the old you in the last few days of our relationship. And it kind of scared me. That makes sense. As we got closer and I was able to like, peel back the, the onion layers I was able to show you like the sweet side of me the the un um I don't know what you call it but I was able to show you like maybe it's the, I can't tell if it's the real side of me or not it probably is if it was like the t side of me that was coming out when we were like in love with each other and that so that's probably the I real side of me. the real side to you but I think the side that you not necessarily the side that you put on as a facade but I feel like maybe you initially put it on as a facade and now that's like become who you are like in social situations. But I think who you were with me was the real you because it yeah, was a completely different side to you I've never seen anywhere. Yeah, that's actually something that I've thought and I've spoke to the, the boys about is when you do get into the culture that I'm in, when, you, when you're talk, like, talking about like cringy shit, like alpha male, beta male and shit, it's like automatically you are going to push towards that even if you're trying to remain, you know, you like, oh yeah, we want to, we want to be individual. But for example, like girls don't exactly do this right. But a lot of guys who have watched this, I could almost guess that 100% of the guys who are still watching have watched the video on, for example, how to increase testosterone. And I, I doubt you know a single girl who's ever searched, uh, unless if it was medical related, like how to increase estrogen to be like more womanly and attractive yeah. to men. But guys do this shit because we need every little bit of like advantage we can. And so we watch a video like this and it says, oh, the, the alpha male does this. And he, <clears throat> and he speaks with a uh, deeper voice and he, and he takes up more. And so we're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, okay, yeah, me too. What next? What next? So we start doing it. <laughs> We fake it till we make it. People start believing in it. We get more confidence. We go to the gym because going to the gym, building the body, make, essentially fools people to think that this was your natural genetics and you're better than them naturally. And this is why it's attractive to women. It's not that they actually care mm -hmm. about the fact that you've done a thousand workouts. It's just that it makes your genetics seem better. Yeah, it's just the attraction that it gives yeah. you, yeah. So we do this stuff and it's like, you, you, you forget who you were at the start, but then also, is that even you anymore? Because the thousand workouts does truly change you and you do get a sense of like of you know that discipline and, and for a lot of guys it does turn into cockiness and it did for me because you do get cocky if you've been zero to 100 if you've been the fucking sim to pimp you do get cockiness from that and i found that yeah. it does go like this where it like cockiness hits here because right now all the gains all the the result is new and obviously like the ego hasn't caught up to it and eventually it, it becomes natural and it's like okay now I'm like the the natural person who's used to this yeah I feel uh yeah so it can go I forgot I get, what the point yeah. was right like it can <laughs> about personality in it because I, I was wondering this as well because there was times I when I think you no I'll let you finish because I wasn't even sure what I was gonna say <laughs> I'm sorry, interrupted you. <laughs> sorry, there was times when <laughs> I remember when you you were like proper proper into me and you you proper found me cute and everything. When it was like the opposite of what is it a persona? I don't know, but yeah. you can say that there's two versions of me that you saw. There was like, yeah. and and this is the issue because you you got with the first guy. That's the thing. Like the first guy. Yeah, but I didn't get with the first guy. Like, he was like. The, the reason why you stayed around and actually got to witness the second guy and this is at least like yeah, well, boys, uh, me too. yeah. Right. If, you say? if i was originally the second guy 
I would have been like the guys on your Snapchat with where we have a 40 day conversation and you're not meeting me because you'd be meeting a guy like the first guy. I was the first guy. I was, I was like the avoidant style, like the, the fuck boy style. And that's what actually attracted you. You, you, you were attracted because yeah. of that masculine, like alpha male type of shit, but you stayed because of the baby. But I wasn't, I wasn't looking for a relationship. I didn't want a relationship with you. Like for the most, like for the first part of our relationship, well, not relationship, but like, you know what I mean? Like first part of us knowing each other. Like, I remember we, we literally like wouldn't text apart from when we would see each other. Like usually you'd message me to come and see me, to come and see you. Um, and I literally wouldn't, I remember you'd say to me as a joke, you'd be like, oh, you've been thinking about me. And I'd be like, no. I literally, like, I wouldn't think about you unless you messaged me to come and see you. Like, that's the only time I'd ever think about you. So it wasn't like I was going into this one in a relationship. I never wanted a relationship from you. And, like, I thought you were an absolute, like, dick. Like, literally, my nickname, I've called you a, what was it? A scumbag. That was the little nickname I made for you, a scumbag. <laughs> like, I thought that you were an, an absolute, like, egotistical, like, arrogant, like that's dickhead, what you were obviously. attracted to, and this but is why guys are confused. I wasn't. Yes, I wasn't attracted were. to that side of you. We no. just got on. We just got on. <laughs> and then when like we both started like getting feelings, but didn't admit it. I think the second you had started to come out a little bit, because that's why I kind of started getting feelings. Because we started, yeah. it was kind yeah, of weird. I we started like, acting like. Pardon. I think we both had like two sides to us, and slowly we started showing like the vulnerable real honest side to yeah. us which we because we just you've done the same thing maybe to less of an extent because you haven't actually done like the whole like self-improvement as much as i have but you definitely had like a different persona as well the first times so, like you were just standard basic girl yeah like your your i was very i was very different when we first met yeah i was a very 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 different person when we first met you were, you did develop as a person but it was also this the version of you that you were showing. I think if we say persona, it maybe it's like a bit too negative, but it it's kind of like um, you go to an interview and they see a version of you compared to how your friends see you. And it's like, I think generally how relationships seems, at least it was for us is the first time you're meeting for, for a while, it was like, we were both conveying what was expected or strategic or whatever, where, it was in that environment where we were just purely just meeting and we weren't exactly like getting feelings and we weren't going to show up our vulnerable side to like be open mm. and honest with each other. And as we spent time with each other and we started doing that, that's when the feelings came. Yeah. Cause we always kind of acted like, even when we weren't like doing couple things, I feel like we did always kind of act like a couple, like yeah. even kind of near the start. That's interesting. So not, do you think that not right near the start, maybe like a month or two in Yeah. So do you think like the reason why we actually, the reason why we progressed and we like we continued was because of, let's say, the real vulnerable, like cutie side to us. Because that was actually the reason why like I was more interested in you than other, it was because it wasn't just like I was meeting not exactly like I still thought you were a basic bitch, but it was like that I wasn't meeting like a girl who just had the the male personality equivalent of what you thought I was in terms of the scumbag fuckboy. It's like that's you were the female equivalent of that. And most girls like all girls I meet honestly are like the female equivalent of that. I know. You don't you don't like see it, but I was I'm, never I'm I've never you. been a You can't tell though. You weren't dating you. You weren't like meeting you though. That's I'm true. You that is true. Set, do you know what I mean? If yeah. I accept that I was a scumbag I... if you're saying it, you've got to accept this. <laughs> yeah, girl. that's true, that is true. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I just think... thought you know when you text me to do the podcast? That was when I as I was I was literally drinking a basic bitch cocktail. That's what it was called, basic bitch cocktail, and I saw that you've messaged me. <laughs> and I was like, I might just send a picture of this cocktail. <laughs> There's your answer. I am really yeah. interested in that. To think that at first, okay, we were attracted to each other just on that like kind of physical sense and, and the personality we were conveying was like, let's say fuck boy and fuck girl. <laughs> we're superheroes. <laughs> and perhaps the reason why at least 
you for me was that you were the priority. Like I, I told you this, you were like the priority above other girls or like pretty quickly. And mm. I think that's because actually like I saw the non fuck girl version of you. And I think you felt the same way when you started to see the non fuck boy version of me. And it's like, we all yeah. like you automatically did it. I consciously did it, which is like more manipulative. I will say that, but both of us put this, this, persona that is more widely socially accepted and you kind of have to do this shit when you go on to dating apps and you're seeing a hundred mm. people you have to be like maybe the avoidant style personality where you're, you know you're, you're cool, yeah you're aloof you're cool and everything it's like treating me and keep them keen isn't it yeah <laughs> both of us did that because we actually progressed because we we went away from that and it's making me think what if yeah. there was just none of the the first part mm. I, I was thinking that before. I wonder if it would have happened or not. Would it, we have even been attract, like attracted to each other? I think we would have been. Or would we have literally just been like one of the people who send like paragraphs on dating apps and then just never met up? Because the, the reason why we were Probably. attracted to each other was honestly, we, it was sexual attraction at first. We didn't know enough yeah. about each other's personality. We met just because we knew like, okay, both of us. It was okay. just like, I'd fuck this person. I was just like, this guy's a dick, but he's good looking and I get on with him. So yeah. I was thinking that by myself as well. Yeah, of course. You have a god complex. That's your issue. You have a god it's complex. It's not a complex, mate. <laughs> Just a uh, uh. Honestly, some of the things you say make me feel physically repulsed. Like literally, Just there's repulsed. been so many things you said in this call. Oh, I hope he texts me so today. <laughs> Pardon? I hope he texts me today. <laughs> well, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> I actually haven't thought that since we broke up. No, nah, not since we broke up, just in general. Like, because near the start, obviously, you were saying that oh, I was a scumbag, I was a, I was a dick, but it was like, as soon as I sent you the message, you were like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's go meet the scumbag. Oh, yeah. That's another thing in the manipulation video that you fucking lie about. You're like, oh, you like guys won't believe this. Like, the girl's doing all the work. Like, she's asking to see me. Literally, when we were, like, before we were in a relationship, I probably asked to see you, like, three or four times. And we saw each other, like, three times a week. Nah. So you were... Nah, yeah. you, nah you, you could scroll up the text messages. Nah. Was, at first, it was mostly me, nah. and then it began to be you, like... When we were in a relationship, yeah. Nah, before that. Not half so the like, time. Yeah. Like, the, nah. or, even, even then, we can say that this is like weirdly your level of manip manipulation where even though you wanted to see me you knew for a fact that i'd be messaging you today or tomorrow anyway so you know what i mean so you can shut the fuck up <laughs> you just didn't want to put yourself that's not manipulation that's just i don't want to be the one to ask but i know he's going to ask me there we go the first time of abuse <laughs> oh my god let's see Let's see what else. Oh, nah, no more of the negative shit, mate. I'm done. <laughs> nah, there is negative stuff. Right, no, no, not it's not really negative. Take a number just... one to twenty-six. This is gonna 11. be fucking painful. Eleven. Oh, that's not bad. Reason number eleven why. Uh. <laughs> right. I didn't have, I haven't actually titled it why Eve is trash, but we can say that's that's the list is number eleven. She wanted to continue her plans which she made when she was single and everyone supported that. You already knew that to be honest. I'll let you re roll yeah. for another one. Cause there's some juicy ones on this. <laughs> Read me the juiciest. Nah, you cut you guess the number. Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, interesting. <laughs> she would have pressured me into marriage and like a dumbass, I would have considered it. <laughs> I would have pressured you into marriage 100%. Nah. 100%. That actually leads me on to what I was going to say. Yeah, because when we first met, you didn't even want... You, I remember asking you, do you think you'll ever get into a relationship at any point in your life? And you're like, nah. Nah. You didn't say that. I did. No, I might have said, do you think I'd be getting a relationship and you're like, no. Nah. Pardon? No, nah, well, nah, that's, that's not true at all. Yeah. If, if we had, I don't yeah, remember having true. this conversation, but if, if you 
asked me if, if I ever wanted to be in a relationship for the rest of my life. I'm not sure. ever. I probably didn't say ever. I probably said, can you see yourself getting into a relationship? And you're like, no. Yeah, but could you at that point, though? <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> it hit us both. Yeah, but I wasn't talking about with me. I just meant in general, because I couldn't see myself getting in a relationship with you, so I wasn't talking about me. Yeah, but just in general, like, I wasn't expecting it with you or with anyone, and you went, I think you were the same, weren't you? It just kind of happened. Yeah. That's true. But um, you have, in the terms of, like, male and female roles, you have, like, traditional values, mm. would you say? Yeah. So... Do you think that's toxic? Like, you think... No. Um, so, like, a woman should be submissive, a man should be dominant. Mm. That's what you said. But I think it's... You can't really... In my opinion, I don't think you can really pick and choose things to be traditional about when you your relationship with women is untraditional. Oh. Casual sex. Is untraditional. Not necessarily for these times, but it's also for these times the views that you have for male and female roles are very outdated and not traditional. So and also, like, marriage. Like you said, you won't get married. That's very mm. traditional. So yeah, you can't really point. say, oh, men should be this and women should be this. Unless you want to do the whole. When, when you don't have the whole That's traditional. a really good point. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> 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 we got him, girls. <laughs> That's a very good point, actually. I appreciate you bringing that up. I'd, I'd never even considered that. Like, I, I do... You, you know me. I'd, I've very much valued like the traditional sense of like man because these days like relationship co like dynamics are just fucked it's like both of them are dominant or usually the man is actually submissive and it, it skews yeah, the whole thing that even if people can get in a relationship and stay in it the girl always resents a guy who's more who's less dominant than she is no matter if she wants to pretend like she's like mm. you know as dominant it's like subconsciously it it isn't right even though we're not allowed to say it's offensive but it, it subconsciously it's like hum, human nature is that the man is more dominant and the woman is more submissive and yeah i do agree with that but, but i think i want that without actually doing the rest of it the traditional yeah shit. which you can't expect yeah that's a very good point and it's actually something i, I realized not completely but I think as we were getting together and I was, I was drifting away from casual sex and I, because the fulfillment that I got from you was uncomparable to when I meet girls just to sleep with them. And I mm. always find myself casually sleeping with girls and wanting something more, like wanting essentially, honestly, exactly what we had, but attracting the wrong girls from that. And it's yeah. more like easier or it's easier to be successful with that to to start as the fuck boy to start as a casual sex and to move over to the relationship because you're going to get more girls like this but the issue is that the girls mm -hmm. you do attract with this generally don't fit in with this and i think that that maybe is what happened with us is i like i no. like we went into the casual sex thing but we yeah to transition that into a long-term relationship it doesn't generally work I don't think that's the I don't think that's the issue with us because I'm not like a casual like I'm not like you in terms of like my <laughs> I'm not like the other girls I'm not a <laughs> I'm not like no I'm honestly I'm like I'm, like I've not been with many people you know that mm. so I'm not like I've never really like been in that scene like at all so I, I feel like this like fuck girl I'm really surprised that you say that I had like a fuck girl persona because mm. like that couldn't be what the furthest thing the, from me the res what do we say the results of that if you were single for longer pardon yeah like you had the personality and the behavior of it you just didn't have enough time to essentially get the, the body count up and I think with some time, you... you yeah, will. maybe. When you're single now, you're going to go to uni, you're going to do your master's and everything, you'll go to, like, a double-digit body count and then triple-digit. <laughs> you're going to be a triple-digit, are you? <laughs> you're going to be a triple-digit. <laughs> what, like you? <laughs> no, nah, I'm not that, I mean. Maybe, like... That, that's not... That's not going to be me. 
I'm not like you. I don't just fuck anything. Mm. That's what I did with you. Has to yeah. lower the standards way down. I was like, ah, might just drop one in there. <laughs> Literally going against everything you said in this, in this call. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I just think that with our relationship, it seemed very much like it was like, for a lot of things, it was like me or this. Like, I feel like you, I remember when I came back to uni and yeah, I probably shouldn't have come back to uni. Like we'd been in a relationship for what, like two, three weeks when I came back to York, which yeah, I probably shouldn't have done. And I completely understand like your view on that, like a hundred percent. Um, but then also I think it needs to be considered that it was like my last bit of time here. Like I'm never going to live in York again which is like why I've stayed here when everyone else has gone. Cause I'm just like, I want to be here. But, um, that didn't mean I didn't want to be with you. And you said very, like, I remember you saying like around about the time we were breaking up, you're like, Oh, you, you put your friends above me, which I can understand why you feel that way. hundred percent. Um, because obviously when I was coming back to uni, I was like, Oh, like Grace is on her own. Like I need to come back and be with Grace and all this, which I remember you saying like, Oh, you, put being with grace above being with me but the thing is being with you like i thought i was going to spend my whole life with you what's three weeks when we've got forever so mm. when i've already made that promise to my friend i'd already promised her that i was coming back two weeks before and if i'd have told her that i wasn't going to come back she wouldn't have come back either so that's like i think it's it's, it is difficult to say because I understand your perspective on it, but also like my care and my like want to actually like spend like not a lot of time, but like some time with my friends never ever would have invalidated my like love and commitment towards you. And I don't think you understood that. I think you thought that it was like me choosing my friends over you, but that was never the case. Mm, but that, I think... Like, I think you can see it. it's like objectively it did look like that. If you look at it from the outside, yeah. we get into a relationship and you know, it's like literally honeymoon period. We're so close. And then straight away, you're going away for it. You're going away for as long as we've been together. And yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll come and see you for like a couple of days, but it's like, it, it's yeah, just it strange is. to do that. But I think when I look back at it at that time, I was like quite resentful and I was quite, like worried and everything for it but now when I look it's yeah. like it was honestly just a an unideal situation I, where I understand yeah. why you went and I, w I was really really looking at it from your point of view and even my point of view which I was thinking okay if I was back in that student accommodation which I used to like and if it was going to be my last time there like it would be awesome to have like three weeks there even if it would make you feel anxious yeah. like, like, like I remember I remember when the lease ended in the place that you were with, with your ex and like she'd left and I remember you well, we'd always talk about it and I remember you even messaged me saying like oh if I try and get the keys like sh like we'll go and we'll spend a couple of nights there like that was you really wanting to go and spend time in this last place yeah and that's what I wanted to do and yeah. be with my friends who like one of my friends lives in Guernsey when am I ever going to see her my other friends live in London like realistically how often am I, am I going to see them like what once or twice a year if that, and this was the last bit of time that I had here. I mean, yeah, I had more time after that, but that was the last bit of time that I was choosing to go there. And yeah, I've come back, like, sounds contradictory because I'm saying like that was my last <laughs> bit of time when I'm literally here now when we've been broken up a month. But like, that was like, I remember saying to you, like, I'm going to come for this amount of time and then I'm going to just come back and just not have the rest of the lease. Like I was planning on just coming and staying at home. And obviously I only came back I came back here for six days and then went home because you broke up with me. <laughs> and then we got back together and then broke up again two days later. Mm. Um, hey, that, and then, that was a horrible week, God. That was literally like that, was, like... that showed me the effect that an attachment can have when it literally made me feel like I, I was genuinely sick. Like, I know. I literally got a I fever was. from that. And of course, you, like, you know, it could have been coincidence or something. Like I got a fever randomly. But I think it genuinely was just caused by forming yeah. a, such a stronger connection and then just seeing it like... Mm -hmm. Like falling apart. It's yeah. horrible. I think, and I think that's like a, a big thing, like people in my life that I need, like I would want people in my life to understand is like, like 
obviously everyone in my life has a very, very, very negative opinion of you. And you know, I actually spend a lot of time defending you, which I, I don't like and I get called out for all the time. Yeah, but but um, not defend me, just join in with them. Like, yeah, he wasn't it. <laughs> I do usually <laughs> join in, but then like, they, I I feel like they, but, <laughs> don't just fucking say that. So I do usually join in and then move, <laughs> move the topic of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't moving I was carrying on no I mean like I do have mainly negative feelings towards you mm. probably not after this call but like I did yeah. have mainly negative feelings towards you but like like people seem to think that I was completely a victim in this which like to some extent yeah but also like you were hurt as well like it was a very hurtful situation for both of us. It wasn't yeah. one of us was hurting the other person. It was us both hurting each other, and the situation mm-hmm. hurting both of us. Like it That's was. How like friends it are react to this though? Because my if I like the guys I speak to, only have like the negative view of you, even though I said so much positive stuff about you, like just you know the days before everything happened. That seems and like so when it. it comes up, obviously we're just like insulting you and shit, but. <laughs> What do you say when you insult me? Sam always calls you a wench. <laughs> I think you like a that. wench. You called me that when we were together. Though. <laughs> <laughs> Not a wench, Sam. I promise. She is Sam. Don't worry. Pardon? She is Sam. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you said. Uh, oh God! What else? That is like it's it's how I expect our like social circle to because all your friends and all your family are not just going to suddenly say, oh, Hamza, was a great... They're not going to say it, are they? Like, maybe he'll come up every now and then in a couple of months' time or something when you're, you're reminiscing. Mm-hmm. And you're, oh, yeah, he was actually cool for setting you up with mindfulness or something. But right now, yeah. it's easier. It's, like, nicer for our friends to say easier. bad stuff about us because it kind of helps us because yeah. our mind's automatically been generating more negative than positive because positive mm-hmm. would mean that we'd want this connection again. And yeah. I wonder what it's going to be like after this call because it's definitely going to, at least for me, it's good. To, uh, yeah, it is for you as well, to be honest. It's going to be like more positive than it has been. Yeah. Which I am, I I am actually really good. looking forward to that because even if it kind of hurts and more in the sense of like an attachment being broken and we miss each other more, I, I actually want to experience that than just negativity and resenting you. Like I, I actually yeah. just want to miss you. Like I, 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 I want to feel yeah. like I look back and I cry at like, all the happy moments rather than look back with like anger for the bad moments that's what i say to people like like when my friends are really trying to but it's not like they're trying to make me feel negative about it like they do feel negative about it they will like if i was my friend i'd be saying the exact same thing i'm saying a lot of the same things that they are i'm, I'm like sat here like oh yeah like i can say nice things like i literally say that i like hate you all the time I'm, like fucking hate you <laughs> but um that means you still fancy me <laughs> No, it doesn't. Dead ass does. <laughs> um, uh, I forgot what I was even saying. What was I even saying? It's really going to piss me off. Because it was a good point as well. No, it wasn't. I can't think. Mm-hmm. But no, like, friends are obviously going to say more negative stuff, but... Um, like in our, I, I'd say there's more positive than, there was more positive than bad in our relationship. Mm. Like it was eight months of good, but I think the bad outweighs the good. There was less bad, but the bad was more serious. Yeah, yeah but honestly, like the good was extreme as well. And I think mm. that we've just focused on the bad just because I honestly feel, at least for me, I focus on the bad because it's been easier emotionally to focus on it than it is to focus on the good. And yeah. if we did focus on the good, if, for example, like it'd be counterintuitive maybe, but if we like, for example, we're like proper every day thinking about what we were grateful for each other for, instead of thinking, oh, I'm grateful it ended. We thought, okay, I'm grateful why it happened and what happened inside of it. And I'm grateful for like this yeah. thing that we did. Yeah, that was my point. Like I remember saying to my friends, like, because when I say like positive things, like sometimes like, oh, like it's a bit concerning that you, that you like say positive things, but I don't want to be filled with hate. Yeah. I don't want to be filled with resentment. I don't want to look back at this time of my life and be like, and feel regrets. Like mm. we've, we've had a great time together. Like lockdown would have been horrible if, mm. if we didn't have each other in our lives. Like 
there's a lot of positive that we have to look back on and I don't want to look back and see red. I want to look back and see all like the nice memories. Oh, no, let me just go. change the color. What color do you want to look back on? Like, <laughs> should we put green, you know? <laughs> yeah, not I agree with you. I think... Look. I like that one. Thanks. I made that call cool myself. But yeah. How do you think this call is gonna change things for you? Or do you think it's gonna change things for you? Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna I I'm already seeing you in a way more positive light because it's not just on like Instagram messages which feels kinda of cold. And so Yeah. I've been kind of cold towards you on messages. Mm. I feel like, like you went back. I remember when I said, personality. Yeah, I just couldn't like I couldn't be that lovey side towards you. Like I just oh it's a weird angle. I couldn't um I couldn't I couldn't just even acknowledge it. Like it was just too painful. It was just horrible. That's the first time in my life I've ever like shut something out of my brain like that's the first time I've ever like like I've been the one like cutting contact but it was just it was way too much I wasn't cutting contact but do you know what I mean like I it no, seemed I, more I like I think was was resisting it. nah I'm not too sure you know I think mm, I, don't know. I said you a couple the times messages. that you messaged were colder than my messages but like I was the one who like blocked you and deleted your number and unfollowed you and everything first. It was like yeah, but that's not just something that that's not something that I do anyway. Mm. I mean, whatever. It just it doesn't have to be a competition of who can be meaner <laughs> to the other person. No, of course not. But that's <laughs> like I remember like I sent you that message telling you that I missed you, and then your reply. Oh, oh my yeah. god, I fucking strangle you when I got that reply. I was like, <laughs> you start crying. But then I was like afterwards like I looked at it and I was like wait like you asked to meet up and I was like no like you sent me voice notes like telling like telling me how much you love me like I didn't say I love you once after we broke up because I couldn't allow myself to say it and I was like I can't really be upset that he sent a message like this when I've literally just like not said I love you back or mm. oh no my responses were very like robotic yeah it felt like you were replying as if like your family was like looking over your shoulder and you were replying in a no, way. No, that like, wasn't true. That, obviously, it's, uh, I'd expect it not to be true, to be honest, but uh, yeah. this is how I felt towards your messages. It was like, it wasn't my Eve who was replying. It was like the world's Eve. It was like, you know, the fuck, it was like the fuck girl Eve. It was just kind of like, oh, that's the way to cal to get a, I don't know but I think it's I couldn't be your Eve it wasn't that I didn't want to like I just couldn't I just couldn't show that side to you anymore because yeah. if I started showing that side it it would be harder I think if you did show and that do, side like, we would have like somehow reconnected I think you would have told your mum that you yeah. were meeting someone else we would have just met each other that's why I didn't meet up with you because I knew that I'd want to get back with you immediately. Yeah, probably good. And I wouldn't be surprised. We did. Yeah. Do you think we would have done if we met up? Hard, like we would have like reconnected on that day, and I think we would have like mm -hmm. seen like we would have like essentially just been together, messaging again. But I think it potentially would have like ended again within a yeah, couple me days. Too. Like it would have been just prolonging the pain. I'm, yeah, that's what it look was. Back, I am yeah. like grateful. Like, it, it was an awkward situation. We didn't really break up. Your family broke us up, but I like I do look yeah. back with gratitude for that because I don't think either of us had like the ability yeah. to break up with each other, and I don't know if our like we ever had like long term. Do you think we had potential long term? Um. Difficult to say. Mm. Yes and no. I could I see it like, happen, I to be honest. Yeah. I thought I thought it was gonna happen. Yeah. But we were planning that shit. Like we were literally like 
I fully found in it. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Trying to go to Bali. Pardon? Trying to go to Bali. <laughs> I'll meet you there. <laughs> yeah. Don't be surprised if we bump into each other in Bali one day. Imagine how weird that would be. Don't be mad. How's your YouTube channel going? Um, I've not posted a video since the last oh. one with you in the thumbnail. Yeah. Did you delete that one? I deleted it. I privated it and then yeah. I then I unlisted it and I put it on public, then I unlisted it and I fucking Yeah, it's on public now. Yeah. What did you see that I deleted it? I think Sam told Not me deleted. that you deleted it and then I think I un I unsubscribed. <laughs> so you smash that unsubscribe button. I don't want to see that shit. Yeah, I unsubscribe from you. Yeah. Apologies. Huh? Apologies. That's all right. <laughs> I've got plenty more. <laughs> oh, really? How's YouTube going? <laughs> Have you not seen? Sorry. <laughs> Why are you weird? I mean, if you want to go and subscribe, then maybe you can. Uh, I mean, I'll subscribe to you when you subscribe to me. <laughs> I don't want to see a video on your page. Like, oh, how I really <laughs> began to love my life is just you with a different guy. <laughs> 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 no, give me an idea then. <laughs> yeah, I think if I you. put in, I'll literally report your video. <laughs> Do you think if I, well, when I post a video again, you'll watch it? I wasn't gonna. Like, I already knew to myself that if I do see you post one, that it would hurt watching it. And I know you probably would speak about this and it would hurt yeah. you. But I think now I, I, I probably would. Like, I think it would, it would hurt. It would make me feel uncomfortable because I know that you'd, you know, you'd be spitting truth anyway. And you'd say, like, oh, well, how my relationship ended? And he was, he was toxic. He was abusive. But I feel like you'll also do, like, I can imagine you also saying, but I wasn't perfect either. You know, I was, I was this, I was this. I was, you're just going to say that shit. I've so literally I filmed a clip of me saying that exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you would have. So I think I don't. I, I don't put that in the video. Like the next video I've done, I've got it like pretty much finished. I just need to edit, it, upload it. What is the video? We'll finish editing. It. Um, I feel like my camera angle keeps sliding down. It's really pissing me off. Um, writing my dissertation in a week. Mm. <laughs> I literally wrote it in like five days. Do I see it? How many pages is it? Like thirty nine. Good job. Nine, what, ten thousand words. Nine, yeah, nine thousand nine hundred and sixty eight. Did you get the result yeah. for it? Not yet. I think I'll literally get it any time in the next few days. Mm. Just scary. I hope I've done well. Yeah. I'm fucking proud of myself for the last few months, you know, like, not few months, like the last month. Obviously with like this breakup and stuff and like the dissertation and the topic it was on as well. Mm. And writing it all in like a week whilst going through that, like, I'm just gotta be your own biggest fan sometimes. <laughs> 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 now you know how I feel. Pardon? <laughs> now you know how I feel. <laughs> God's complex. Fuck it out. I'm going to be like you next. <sighs> um, yeah, I'm just looking over my notes. Yeah. I put in capitals, we don't use our insecurities to justify abuse, manipulation and control. I think, I think the biggest thing for me that makes me see you as controlling is it all came out after I was in love with you. Like none of these boundaries were set into place before we even started getting into a relationship. 
And I think if they had been, we wouldn't have got into one. Yeah, but I don't think that's that's like a, a good point though, because before we Maybe. got into a relationship, then of course, like I'm not going to have boundaries for you because we're not. Yeah, of course. But I mean, like when we started getting into one. Yeah, but it it wasn't some, like something that was in my mind to think like, okay, yeah. Johnny, because you weren't you weren't doing the stuff then anyway, so it didn't even come up. It was yeah. like it, I didn't calculate saying, "Oh, let me make make her in love with me." Then be really strict. It was just that <laughs> it kind of happened that we we fell in love, and then the opportunities for you to like go out and plan all these nights out then came. And of course, the boundaries are mm-hmm. somewhat going to get stricter when the investment is higher, the emotional investment is higher. Yeah, of course. It wasn't honestly like I probably am manipulative, but. I have the confidence to say that. And I think that almost every single person has to say that like you would be too at this point, everyone would be, I would be higher than everyone else because I've purposely like researched and like found the things that work and, you know, through self-improvement itself is manipulative. But then, do you know what I mean? At this point, it's like, I'll go into the gym is manipulative, but is someone going to make that as a, as a point or a, a girl mm-hmm. getting advice from her friend in terms of texting a guy and a friend says, oh, you know, do this, like, don't reply to him just yet. That's manipulative, but is anyone going to, do you know what I mean? It, it's just that I can be branded yeah. as, as a guy who's manipulative and who's controlling and I, I'll take it, but I don't think most other people would. Like if, no. if that is what manipulation well, is. That isn't that something control, that you should it? take. That isn't something you should take. That's something that you should acknowledge and look at the behaviors that are that way and assess and think right what can i change and learn from it you're always about bettering yourself and like literally your whole channel is about self-improvement like use this to improve yourself Mm, good point like i know i know that you in your brain telling your girlfriend if you do this i'll leave like that seems justified because obviously that anxious attachments that you don't put yourself in a situation that makes your partner anxious, which I I, I do agree with to some extent, but it, we don't tell people what they can and can't do. And yeah, ultimately you can say, I wasn't telling you what you can and can't do. I was just telling you if you do certain things, I'd leave. But that is telling me what I can and can't do because I, I don't want you to leave. I won't get into a relationship with you if I wanted you to leave. So of course, like, when you're saying to me, oh, if you do this, I feel too anxious and I'll have to leave, that is telling me what I can and can't do. And that's making me choose between you and something mm. that would have happened. Like, So how should I have done I, that then? What do you think? What do you mean? Like, put yourself in my shoes. That's a boundary that I want to, like, make clear because I didn't need to kind of express it beforehand before it came up that you wanted to, like, start, you know, to go to this club or something. But when it came up... It wasn't because I wanted to... I just to broken up with you straight away. What do you mean? But there was no situation where I wanted to go to a club. The only situation was the event that I booked, which I remembered about after we'd already had all these conversations. Hmm. But it did, I remember like I was we were speaking about it. Do you know what I mean? Like, let's just, like, what I kind of see, I do see your point and I, I am beginning to agree with it. But my issue is then is in terms of improving and, and to not be manipulative or to set these like controlling boundaries. How? Because the only other way is to just never get into a relationship with someone who could potentially cross one of your boundaries, which honestly is probably like the but better way. But we, at some point, no, no matter whether you're with someone who never, ever, ever goes out, never goes to clubs, never puts themselves in that environment. I'm that person. I never, I never, ever, ever go to clubs like ever. I mean, obviously it's been locked down since you've known me. So you can only like believe so much, but, it's never been me second year of uni literally went out twice it, at uni it was literally at uni and I went out twice in the whole year and but the thing is even if you get with someone who's not like that there's going to be if you're planning on spending forever together there is going to be a point where I would have gone on a night out without you that is going to happen at some point in forever there's going to be a point where you go on a night out with your boys like this that's what happens so you can't say, oh, I'm never gonna, I'm not gonna get with someone that never goes to nightclubs. Like that was me. I never go to nightclubs, but it is gonna happen at some point. And you can't ruin a whole relationship based off something which isn't gonna happen. Like, yeah, they're gonna go to nightclubs, but I'm not gonna cheat on you. And you your fear of something that would have never, ever, ever happened ruined our relationship for me. 
And the reason why we were hesitant to get into a relationship was because of your trust issues. And for me, it feels like it ended because of your trust issues. I feel like it's probably very different for you, but we both have different experiences from this. So, Yeah, that's true. No, I can, I can see it as that's like a reasonable... Um... Oh, I need to sneeze, but it's just like teasing me. I hate that. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? Um, I can see that as like a reasonable um, reason for you to think about the breakup. It's not exactly the the thing that I have in mind, but to be honest, it, it, it kind of is because if I didn't have the trust issues, if I didn't think, like if I didn't need to can keep thinking to myself, okay, I'm, I'm close to the line, I don't feel secure in this relationship, she wants to go do this like thotty single girl shit, then it would have been like a closer connection. It would have been less negativity. It would have been yeah. less everything. And the thing that ended us wouldn't have ended us. Yeah. But I don't know. Never... Because, I mean... <sighs> Maybe we would have ended because of something else. Who knows? Yeah. But because we I ended think before that. Say... Though. Do you know what I mean? Like I this know. was... like Because I broke up with you while she was still in York because it just stopped because being of... worth it at that point. It was like... Because of the issues that you have. It wouldn't have not been worth it. That's not fair to say, like, oh, the issues you have is the issues we had. Because, yeah, yeah, I agree. That's caused by you. Do you know what I mean? It was like, whether or not, you know, it's my brain, it's irrational, but it's like, it was our issues. And it's unfair to just say, yeah, of course. It was my trust. I think it's just, I view mine as mine. So, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You, You had less trust issues simply because maybe we're like, you know, built different, but honestly, mostly because of the environment because you're not like going to feel much much trust with the things that i do which is just my routine and and you know the biggest thing was Mm -hmm. like going to the gym rings but if i started going out more consistently and i went away for a couple of weeks to like live with my boys for a bit you and to go you know go drinks you would then 100 percent be in my situation in it yeah it wasn't exactly issues yeah this calls like opened like maybe you understand a lot of things more and I feel like maybe you had that perception of me like coming to uni or going to uni because of the perception you had of me when we first met which is this fuck girl persona what? whereas that like it couldn't ever have been further from the truth for me Wait, so I feel like you, you I feel like maybe like this has just clicked maybe you thought that me going to uni is gonna put me into like being like that because of when we first met I yeah. You had this like fuck girl perception of me. Yeah, that's exactly but, what it is. But that isn't me. That's never, ever, ever been me. No, but that's. <laughs> I mean, it, you know, it's nice for you to say that, but it's like that's how you interact with believe. me. It's, it's yeah, not about believing you because it, it's not like I disbelieve you. It's just that I can only obviously see you how I've seen you, and that was you. Yeah. Have, like the fuck girl, obviously, is like the wrong word because you're not. You're not even a fuck girl, and but whatever word we would say is is not my eve not like we both had like two versions where it was like i was your hamza you were my eve and then we also had the one where we were like the tinder version like we'll say the other oh, hamza yeah hamza number two <laughs> he's the one who gets all the bitches <laughs> and so you were like that that was like i automatically in my mind is like you're gonna be like basic bitch eve like social media eve or tinder eve when you go and to be honest the thing is it it happened that was exactly like 100 percent of what happened is you it went didn't happen, but i showed to you that i was that i i it didn't happen but my behavior made it seem as though it had so, so it happened do you know what i mean let's just, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> just shut the <laughs> but no like the instagram thing like fucking stupid like that's I what i mean that's, so that's literally what I kind of knew would happen and you didn't go as far as I thought you'd, you would have with something like that. But if, again, it's the situation, if that was coupled with you drinking and you were all out for drinks and there was a couple of guys that you were all speaking to, it's like, it can add up, especially when you've got yeah, of course. Like, pissed it off never add- about. So it, I it can did understand happen why how you I expected believe- it to. Pardon? It did happen how I expected it to is, is you, you reverted back to yeah. like tinder girl or like social media eve which but you only saw that one point you only saw that one point where i was stupid and i went and looked at who you were following on instagram you didn't see all the other time when i was sat in my room meditating and journaling and mm. 
that they're thinking about you. Like I, when I'm at uni, I spend a very small amount of time with my friends. The most, the most part of the time I spend on my own. And you can say, I remember I told that to you and you were like, oh, well, why do you want to go back to uni? But I, I like the routine I have here. Like my mm-hmm. housemates have moved out. I'm still here on my own for two weeks. I'm like, gonna, like, I, I do understand that a lot more now. After, yeah. I think when we were like fully together, I didn't have a negative perception of your family at all. Like I really liked them and I didn't see any kind of negativity from them. So when you would say like, Oh, you, you didn't exactly want to be home. You'd rather do your dissertation here. Cause it's peaceful and everything. I couldn't really understand it. Cause I was just thinking I was do it at home. But obviously whilst everything was kicking off, I was like, shit, this is like why she actually liked being there. And it reminded me of a few years ago when um, I really liked being in my student accommodation. Cause it'd be like just yelling and shit in my house. And yeah. I thought, like, oh yeah, that it makes sense now. Like, why she she enjoys living out because she's still like twenty something in it. She's still, like twenty one. Like, yeah, like you're what twenty three, twenty four. Twenty four is. Yeah. Yeah. How was Yo. your birthday? Huh? How was your birthday? Yeah, it was real good. Got Can cake, kick mushroom. <laughs> All the boys were like messaging me like happy birthday and everything. And I got. No you just lay there crying into your, into your pillow like, oh, I wish I was with you. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly, but I mean, <laughs> just like, reply, like, happy. like she might reply one more. Oh, <laughs> uh, what, when I message you? Yeah. Happy birthday. You what were you thinking? I was going to reply to your reply. Yeah. Were you just like checking your phone waiting for me to reply? Yeah, like once or like. 50 times <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't think i don't think I'm i was fully, shocked by your reply put him i don't think i've fully moved on from you no i haven't i found it difficult to like interact i was speaking to sam about this like the last few days especially like i've been trying to get back out there and speak to girls and i literally are finding it so difficult and i was trying to think why and i was thinking I was like am i retarded am i ugly now like what the fuck like and I didn't even like have it in my mind at all up until this call. And I just realized it. Yeah. It's cause how fuck on my side crying, but how can you like try and speak to new girls when you're like still in love with someone? I think that's like why I've been the way I have been just kind of like no interest in guys. Mm. Asexual. Yeah. Like, I've been in, like, situations and stuff, and I was just like, mm-mm. That's just not. That's what girls say. I have to get pounded and, like, oh, don't know about that. No. <laughs> not situations like that. Mm. Oh, shit. Um... I'm sorry, Harriet was calling me. Oh shit, I didn't realise the time. Three hour podcast. Who the fuck's gonna watch this? Is it three hours? Yeah. What time did we start? Half four. Shit. <laughs> I didn't realise it was this time. Mm. Mm. Do you miss me? Yeah. Dearly. Mm. Yeah. Do you miss me? So mad, like, all these puns. Do you miss me? Um, yeah. I just miss, like, the, the good times. Mm. <laughs> yeah, obviously, I'm not sat here, like, ah. Oh. Oh, I wish she makes you cry again. Of course, <laughs> I miss that of shit. Course, but, I just, but that is what I miss. The good times, like... Yeah. I kind of wish I could relive them sometimes, but... Yeah. I don't feel like it would have been like that forever. I think without... Maybe. Without the bad times, it would have. And I don't know if that, like, makes it invalid or not, but we would have been, like as cute together forever in that sense like if there wasn't a bad thing then we would have still been like how cute we were even when we were like 80 something 
still going on drives. <laughs> Finally fucking finished that hike. <laughs> <laughs> That hike we went on, we hiked for like <laughs> 10 minutes. Like, let's take a break. <laughs> and then I got so sunburned. Oh my God, I went to the beach the other day and no joke, burnt my entire body. Like, I'm so sunburned still. I think I've got a bit of a tan though. Mm. How good's that? <laughs> I'm going with a tan. But, um... Sorry, I just need to... Sorry, Harriet's coming to visit me, so she just texted me. She went away. But, um, should I ask my questions that I have? Um, nice ones. Yeah. Why did you want to do this podcast? <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that I knew. I'd be lying if I said that. I didn't do this knowing that it'd get better views because that's like, it's such an interesting topic to see two exes speak, especially because they've seen me on the the um, videos talking about you. They've seen little clips of you throughout the last few months. And so honestly, that was like one of the main reasons, but also it was like my own curiosity of, of speak. Do you know, like... <laughs> it's not so much that I've wanted to actually speak about our relationship in the sense that, Oh, like, what did you think of this? It, it wasn't even that it was literally that I just felt interested in speaking to you. And I just knew yeah. that it would be like a good conversation. Even if it was a bad conversation, it would be good for at least yeah, like for me. Like, yeah. Just any I, was kind of, I was hoping that you'd come on here and just be a massive dick. So I could just like fully just be like, Oh, fuck that guy. And just, I thought you were going to be, you know, I thought you you thought I was going to be a dick. Yeah, I thought you were going to be like full on like hostile. Like I had some fucking good comebacks and everything. Like I would have fucking dropped you. Like I was telling them to Sam and even he was like, oh my God, I'm so you just killed me. Come on, read me one. Read me one. No, go on. Stop crying. (laughs) No, go on. I already cried once. I didn't. We're good. Oh my God, it's that hurtful. Shit. Yeah. Just in cases, if you wanted to get onto the hostility. I'll just go through the four four point combo. Four point combo. Okay. What made you want to come on to here? I think I kind of said it before. Like, I was really hesitant to speak to you right after we broke mm. up. But then obviously it's been like, what, a month now? Yeah. Like, just over a month probably. So I think it's... I've realized that I do need to have a last conversation with you, like talking about everything and like was both getting everything off our chest for closure. That's why I did it. Yeah. How did like, you feel when news isn't even a part of it for me? Yeah. But how did you feel when you messaged? Cause I, it, it, it disappeared from my mind, but I remember you messaged me saying like you were really in pain and you really missed me. And I actually felt like, I didn't feel that at all at that point because I, I went fully into like, I'm not thinking about girls. So I remember messaging you like, oh no, I'm, I'm good. I'm happy. Like, I don't want to speak to you or something. Yeah. No, you, I think you said, You've already I'm feeling much happier. Mind, you? <laughs> yeah, I think you put, um, I'm feeling much happier. This will hurt to read. I know this will hurt to read, but you deserve the truth. And I was like, <laughs> my heart. But, um, yeah. What were you going to gonna say? Pardon? Did it hurt to read? Yeah. I was already in a mess when I sent you that message. What were you hoping for? Be honest, like completely honest and unfiltered. Were you hoping for me to say like, fuck me too? Huh? Yeah. I was hoping you could say me too. But I wasn't hoping to get anything from it. I just wanted to let you know how I felt. Yeah. I mean, like, going from sharing every single thought that came into my brain with someone to having absolutely no contact is like, what the fuck? Yeah. True. I'm glad that we're both on, like, pretty much the same page now. Because, mm. yeah, I think that's what you wanted. For, like, I didn't, I had already kind of moved on. Not, like, 
at that point I had moved on, but it lasted for like a couple of weeks whilst I wasn't really thinking about you. I was just kind of thinking negatively about you. Mm. And for the last like probably week, week and a half, I thought like a, quite a lot more about you. And I How think I'll, I, I will think a lot more about you. Yeah. But more in like... You think about me every day? Yeah. Like, I don't know, like 20 something times a day probably. Yeah, it's probably about the same amount for me to be honest. <laughs> What like what are you doing when you think of me? Oh snap! <laughs> it's not like it's not. It's nothing that. Is there like certain things that remind you of me? Like I'll be brushing my teeth, and I remember the video of of oh fuck sake, I remember the video of me and you like in the toilet brushing our teeth and you like doing a little dance and everything. <laughs> <laughs> remember that and then I, some, a lot of the times it's just me kind of um waking up like the moment i wake up or in shit yeah like when i'm sleeping it's obviously i'm cuddling my pillow thinking about you and shit um do you still do that yeah <laughs> every, <laughs> <That's night>. <laughs> every now and then i'll throw the pillow away and i'm like nah i'm not cuddling you you fuck off <laughs> but like halfway through the night i just like reach back for it like, like, <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Is it always thinking about me? No, I won't lie to you. It is like, it does change. So sometimes I do think about like my ex before you. Sometimes I think about like, like a f I've spoke to like a couple of girls over the last month or so. So I think about them sometimes, but I'd say it's you like probably 80% of the time. No, it it's hard to say because... No, you can't go back now, yeah. 80%, that's what it is. <laughs> no, no, I was going to say it's like, it would be 100, but it's like the 20% of the time I've like purposely thought like, oh no, it's probably not like good for me to like keep thinking about her. Yeah. So it's like, cause otherwise it's like, if there is like, I love you right now more than I love anyone else. And so it is going to be like, if I'm going to think about someone in a sense, like a girl, like, you know, mm -hmm. I'm cuddling as I go to sleep, I'm going to think about you in it. Yeah, of course. Do you, did you love me more than you loved the other girls in the past. Yeah. It's not even close. Thanks. Next question. Next question. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> um, one of my questions, I mean, you've answered it already, but it was, did you really feel the way you said you did? I think we both know. Did you ever feel like I didn't? like you can't fake that shit i think you might have no. like sometimes gotten the idea like oh wait he couldn't have like loved me if he was being controlling or something yeah. or manipulative if it but... went for the tears yeah but you've got to think what okay even if i was everything you say manipulative abusive is like that wasn't out of hate that was out of like my fucked no. up version of love yeah of course that's a hundred percent like that's what i've always said is you loved me but maybe it's in your own weird way yeah. Did you feel I, like, genuine towards everything you said? To it, to you. Hmm. What do you think? I've had in my mind recently, like I don't know if I've tried to like convince myself or not, but I have had in my mind like she couldn't have meant all that stuff if this is like how it ended. If this is yeah, like her reaction. If we ended and and she didn't even message me properly like to say goodbye or I, you know, I wrote her like a letter and I even wrote on it. Like I would be grateful if you wrote me one and she didn't do and it. And I was going to, mm. I was going to, I was going to after my dissertation. I just, I wrote, I wrote so many letters to you, but I just never sent them. Send me them. You haven't like <laughs> crumpled them away, yeeted them away. Have you? I mean, not handwritten ones. I wrote them on my notes on my phone. You still got them? Um, yeah, send me them. I'd like to Right now? Them. Yeah. Okay. Are go. you going to block me? Right no. now? I no, I won't do it right now because I've, I've got to go kind of soon because um, Harriet's on her way yeah. to meet me. Um, but I'll, I'll send it to you after, after the call. Yeah. Are you going to block me? Why would you say that? 
I just assumed that you would. I don't think it's like everyone's been telling me to block you, but I don't think it's necessary. Like, although we ended on bad terms, like I don't want us to look back and be like resentful towards each other. And I think when you Oh, I think your audio is just cut out. Do you hear me? Yeah. What do you say? Um, I said, like, although obviously we ended on, like, very bad terms, like, I don't, I feel like when you block someone that shows, like, resentment and, like, I don't know, it's just kind of like, I don't know. I, I don't know what my opinion is of it, but. Mm. It's easier to move on when you do that. And that's why I did it. Yeah. It wasn't out of like, like I didn't have resentment towards you, but it, it was honestly more of like a practical way. Like I deleted everything off you. Like I was on the call with the boys and I literally went through like 500 pictures or something and videos and she deleted them and even showed it to the boys and said like, I've deleted them from the recently deleted. And then a few I of like, them. did you? Yeah, but I left them in my recently deleted and then they left my recently deleted the other day. Uh I was actually hoping you didn't because I actually wanted them back. Cause... I was hoping you didn't because I wanted them back. <laughs> it's so mad, like, all these things that I think, like, my assumption was after we broke up, like, you just went back to, like, just seeing loads of people, like, just didn't give a shit, like, just completely shut your emotions off. But, like, but then I'm like, oh, what if he is thinking this? And, like, this called made me realise that you were thinking all the things I thought you were. Like, I forget that we're, like, the Yeah, same. very similar, yeah. That's why we, like, we got so They were, like, the same person. Or well, if you didn't um, delete them, you know, because it makes me feel like it didn't even exist. Like we do, obviously mm -hmm. we've got those memories and we will look back with a bit more positivity after this call, but there's just so much like substance when you've actually got videos and pictures and you can actually I remember. I've still got some of them. I think yeah. I kept a few, but I hid them in my camera roll. <laughs> I got a few, yeah. I am kind of sad that I deleted them. Because mm. like, it's literally all of, pretty much all of, like, both of our memories from the last, like, eight months gone. Because mm. most of them were together. I have, like, a very, very limited amount of them, like, and they, they're not the ones where it's so clear that it's us, you know, in, like, the, the picture of, if you were scrolling, you can't see it's us. It's maybe just, like, a dark rectangle. And, I like, I saw it and I was like, oh, I know what this is. I clicked on it, it's us freestyling. <laughs> Oh, is it? Have you kept that one or did you delete it? Yeah, I've got like five freestyle videos of us. I've got one. I was hoping that you, I was thinking about the freestyle videos like a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh, what if we still have? I've still got all the things that you sent me on like text because I've still got our text conversation. I didn't delete that. Oh, there's like, we, I sent you like bare pictures of us on that. So you still got all them? Oh, I sent me them. I'm going to save them this time. Okay. <laughs> I feel like this has been good for both of us. I feel like it's probably going to hurt a little bit more afterwards, but... It's like a good pain, though. Yeah, it's like... I feel like I'm... Like, obviously, I do... I still have negative feelings towards you. Like, I'm not going to say that I don't, because I do think that like, you have had a negative... You've had a very positive influence on me, but you've also had a negative impact on me, if that makes mm. sense. Yeah. Um, so I do hold some bad feelings, of course, and but I think just hearing what you have to say and also like hearing you say that you agree with some of the things I've said and like, I hope it's changed your perspective mm. to some extent. I know obviously I can't fully change your mindset. I wish I could, but we'll be in the situation if we could. But... Mm. Mm. <laughs> I was actually thinking, <laughs> I wonder if you're going to do that. Nah, that's too much. It's too much. You can't leave me hanging. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm both going to stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll do that after it. End of the call. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice speaking to you. It was nice speaking to you too. I mean, it's not so far away, I couldn't even like fully recognize you. Yeah, I couldn't fully recognize you. I feel like we've both done that like 
subconsciously, but <laughs> I'm like I can't I can't even like see you like how I see you. Like it's not I don't know. Like when I was even looking at your Instagram pictures the other day when I messaged you to come onto the podcast, I was trying to think of like which picture actually like looked like you. Cause I said this to you before. It's like that's not like that's not Eve like, on your pictures. It's like that's not how you look like to me. Really? Um, is this yeah. not how I look like to you? It kind of is, but it's like it's a different I think what's ingrained in my mind is like when we when we're like fully, fully like can like we look at each other different when we're like vulnerable and we're connected to each other and we're like yeah. fully in love with each other. And that's what's like the image of who Eve is. Mm-hmm. Like right now you look like your Instagram pictures, which is still like is you know, it's it's acceptable. But... <laughs> yeah. I like that you've still got me tagged in that picture. Yeah. Have you been checking if I haven't removed you? I've been checking your <laughs> <laughs> why are we the same person <laughs> it's like almost robotic like i click on your name to message you and i literally just go onto your profile click on that picture tap on it once okay good i'm still there <laughs> okay i'm good we're good now <laughs> yeah that's what i that's what i do how well. often have you checked like, like 10, how often do i check it yeah put in like 10 15 times over like the last month like every time we're speaking, if you go onto my profile, you, you checked it. Oh, I was doing it every day at one point. <laughs> Multiple times a day. Yeah. I think the last time I did it was like, probably like a week ago or something. Probably not even that, to be honest. It's probably like a few <laughs> days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Will you untag me? No. Yeah, I don't think I'll untag you. Because even though, like, we're still not together, they were, like, memories that we had together and you were there. Yeah. Oh, we took the pictures of each other, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Credits to the mm. photographer. Yeah, you're the person who takes the best pictures of me, which is so fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> the only reason I was with you, photographer. <clears throat> I still got a picture that you took of me on my wall. I see you pretending to look away and you're like looking at the corner of your like is he still flexing? <laughs> like screenshot quick. <laughs> no, that's just a bit like Not again. <laughs> Not again. Here he comes. Here he's arrogant. <laughs> I won't be surprised if I just get a text saying drive <laughs> one day from you. <laughs> do it, do it, because that'd be so funny. Obviously, I'm not going to call, but <laughs> just do it so I can reject you. Mm. For me, if you love me, you would. I think you're just bitting me to doing it. You're actually going to say like seven fourteen. Pardon, seven fourteen. Oh, fucking mouth freedom. I have a feeling like we're going to see each other again at some point. In what way? Like, not accidentally. Like, one time we're going to, like, either one of us is going to send that message out and we are actually going to meet. I don't know if we're, like, we probably won't, like, get into a relationship. I don't think we're never going to see each other again. I don't know. Never know. My, right now, I don't feel like we'll ever see each other again. Mm. Nah, that's bullshit. But, that's completely... I mean, we live in the same town. We're going to bump into nah, each other not, at some point. That. Not even that. It's like, it's going to be not. Yeah, no, no, it is. It's going to be like both of us just messaging and, and just the world doesn't want us to do that shit, but it's like, fuck them. Yeah. The only way it would happen is say if like you messaged me and we were actually like messaging and stuff and getting on and then it happened. Mm. But I, I like, I'd never reach out for you for that to be to, uh, to you for that to happen. Mm. but I won't be surprised if you did yeah I have a feeling like I will are you waiting by my phone <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you said that 
he just laughed exactly like how I remember. <laughs> really? Shit. You think you love me more because of this call? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, me too. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> And then fucking idiot. <laughs> like I'm right now I'm like, oh I feel good, like it's it's fine, like this has actually helped, but I'm on the call with you right now. Yeah. Is that how you feel? What do you mean? Like right now I feel better about everything. And I'm like, oh like this is really like this call's really helped, like I feel really fine about it now. But I'm on I'm like talking to you right now. Yeah. But this like I was expecting that though because like we always felt better when we'd like speak about this stuff but when we'd have like a little yeah, bit of a distance true. or whatever then it'd be worse in it it was yeah, like I anytime... to myself feel awkward oh. like the whole time no nah, I, just... I knew it wouldn't be i knew like i had a feeling that either it would be like hostile as fuck and we'd be like calling each other out or something or it would be like yeah like i knew it'd be one way or the other yeah mm. i'm glad it went this way yeah me too I kind of wanted you to be a dick, but I'm glad that it's like we're both gonna take it away. I'm glad that you're still in love with me, so. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. I like, you know me, I think of like worst case scenario. So I've just assumed that like, after this breakup, you were just like fully just like forgot that I existed and we're just like seeing loads of girls and stuff. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it, honestly, it was kind of like the plan, but it was. It was like, it was such a, uh, huh? You're just too sad. <laughs> it's not even that, is it? It's not so much yeah. sadness. It was just like, I'm, I'm not going to go get girls while, whilst I'm in love with someone. Mm. I was, essentially, I was like taking like a month off dating and, and, you know, just being a monk and celibate and stuff. And I thought maybe even longer than that. And I just realized like the reason why I feel so uncomfortable speaking to girls right now is because it's like it's not even what I want what I'm not I'm not over you mm. I know that it's like it's a tricky as fuck situation and it's probably not even good for us or anything and I know that it's do you know what I mean it's it's all of my like conscious like good brain is saying like what the fuck are you doing bro just go fuck some bitches like just go back to normal like do you know what I mean but it's like we have that attachment yeah do you and... think you ever will fully move on yeah at some point but right now mm. I think I can't I... see like I can see myself moving on but I I still like we'll always have a bit of love for each other like yeah, it's always right. going to be like, like I said, it's like once it turns, like once the love turns on, it never fully can fully go yeah. off. It's just like 1% and it's always going to be at least 1%. And I think after this call, it's like just went straight up to like 10% or something. Mm. I'm, and I'm glad that it has, even if yeah, me too. consciously or whatever, it's not like all the problems we've had. It's like, you know, all that, but it's, I'm actually, I'm glad. Like that's it. I'm grateful that we've had this conversation that, we both seem to have like the same feelings and I know for a fact like although you're kind of reserved about it it's like you kind of want it as much as I do I want what as much as you do like how this call has went yeah of course mm. that's what I wanted mm. interesting <laughs> that's interesting I wasn't expected. Well, I mean, kind of was, but yeah. Mm. I feel like we're both like going over to talk about the same things over and over to avoid ending the call. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could, I could stay here all day, but like, it? it's like the most entertaining. I'm tempted thing. to just walk to the train station on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> 24 hour podcast <laughs> that would be us you have like a feeling right now like you don't want to stop speaking to me 
Yeah. Alright, me too. I don't want to stop speaking to me either. Sometimes yeah, I just forget that like the other half of my screen has got you. I was like staring at myself like <laughs> I knew you'd be doing that. I knew you'd be doing that. <laughs> Three and a half hours. Saying all that to yourself. I'm gonna stop speaking to you with two hands up. <laughs> I wish I could just make myself go full screen. <laughs> you can on my phone. I'm full screen now. Yeah. God damn. It. She can keep. She all right. Let me just reply to Harriet. Yeah. <sighs> <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, she's literally just like on her way <laughs> to meet me and I was meant to uh like yeah. Didn't plan on being this call being on this call this long. I had plans between this call and meeting Harriet, but alas here we are and Harriet's get into the train station in 10 minutes <laughs> 20 minutes from your bedroom but um yeah what do you think's gonna happen after this play it cool <laughs> give it like a couple of days before i message you <laughs> <laughs> do you think you will message me yeah I will. Yeah. I will. You want me to? <laughs> I do, but I shouldn't. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is why we couldn't have met up. Yeah, this is why your parents <laughs> stopped us from speaking. <laughs> they knew. <laughs> you know, I'm just like... Literally came on to call like you're abusive and now I'm like, oh let's stop speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what everyone was scared of. Yeah. No, I think it'll be good. Like I don't wanna like I don't wanna leave the situation with bad feelings. Like I've had a lot of bad feelings towards you. Mm. I don't wanna feel bad. Because I'm very grateful for you. Like I'm so grateful. Like Half of me is like, I wish none of it ever happened, but the other half of me is like, really grateful it did. But I'm only, I only wish it didn't happen because it's painful, but it isn't. Yeah, mm -hmm. that it's not like on the good points. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. But I think it, for me now, after having this conversation, it's changed and it's like, I'm just, I'm just positive now. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even like, I've realized like, I, I don't want that negativity and in fact I can see so much positivity in the fact that we're still like on the same level with everything that we're doing with how we've like been interacting and how we've been thinking and everything it's just reminded me of like how compatible we were and how much connection we had and it's just made me like I think you what sorry what were you gonna say it has made it's me made like, value what... what we had like a lot like I have not been thinking yeah. about the positive sides of what we had up until right now I'm what we had, but it was very special. It's not even what we had, honestly. It's what we have. It's not. It still hasn't went away. Let's be honest. Yeah, that's true. Why do you have to be like this? Fix yourself. <laughs> Enjoy therapy with me. Him. <laughs> we'll get a self-improvement self coach together. <laughs> <laughs> Go from being each other's self-improvement coach to getting one together. <laughs> yeah. You're going to cuddle your pillow extra hard tonight? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm going to grab your toothbrush. I don't have 
have it anymore. <laughs> I actually don't. Okay. <laughs> There's your boyfriend. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> There's yeah. your boyfriend. That's the guy I'm dating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not dating anyone. Mm. I'm glad you're not. Well, I'm not dating anyone. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to start dating someone when I'm still not this one. What do you class as dating? Mm. Yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't expect it to be like fully, like fully, fully going out with someone right now. But at least mm. like fancying someone and liking some. I mean, I don't know. You could like someone right now as well, actually. Yeah, I think it's possible, but you don't. There was a bit of hesitation in that. Pardon? There was a bit of hesitation in that. In what? And you were like, hmm. <laughs> what do you mean? Mm. No, it doesn't matter, whatever. I don't want to get into details about like, because I think if either of us say, I mean, I don't know. I don't fancy anyone else. Yeah. But <laughs> huh? I said anyone else. I don't fancy anyone. That's bullshit. <laughs> you fancy anyone? There's this one girl. Oh, she what? I'm not in as fuck. <laughs> What else is she like? <laughs> She's goofy. That's true. <laughs> what, do you still like, want to? Yeah. I've like covered it with negativity in it. So instead of thinking about you 20 times a day, like positively, we're thinking like, I fancy her and I'm I'm interested in her and I'm thinking about her and I'm like like sexually into her and everything. Instead of that, I've just like threw a, a negative negative blanket over it because it seemed like that would it probably has helped to to think about it less. Yeah, but of course. I don't think that's like truthful. I think that was me literally just like trying to feel less pain by thing, saying like, okay, quick, full, like I've literally, you know, I've wrote 26 things I, I don't like about you purposely. So like, I, I like you less. Yeah. And it hasn't really, like, I mean, it's kind of helped in the sense that it's made me feel more negative about you, but all it took was like one conversation to just think like, but there's so much to be positive about. Yeah, there is. Mm. It's just so mad that we're so, compatible but also incompatible at the same time mm. let's say the compatibilities outweigh the incompatibilities but the incompat incompatibilities are more serious mm. yeah that's a good way to put it do you think your mindset could change it already, already is like I'm <clears throat> I, you know i'm into that like self-improvement shit and I'm, I'm into like having a small ego and and seeing what i can improve and I, I do have like somewhat obviously i play it up a little bit with you like when we're just joking but i do have like obviously a little bit of a god complex and i'm like i do yeah. think i'm like fucking sick but at the same time i do also have like this thing of like i'm a student and i'm always willing mm -hmm. to learn and i can see yeah. that my my mindset my behavior hasn't been optimum because mm. especially when i say it in like a practical like sense where it's literally just like analytical and i say is there any benefit to having that trust issue kind of mindset no is it going to lead to more problems that, yes like if we didn't have that we'd still be together 
Yeah. It's just sad. Yeah. It's really sad. It's not. I don't feel sad about it, you know, because <clears throat> yeah, I think it's, it's easy it for us to sad. say, like, eh? it is sad. I don't know. Because I think it- it's easy to say, oh, if you just didn't have that, it'd be, do you know what I mean? But it wouldn't have been me yeah. at that time. Yeah, that's true. That's like, you know, everything we were compatible with was, it was included with that and all the experiences I, I've, all the experiences I've had and I've the person I am and the person that you are. That's all of our compatibility. Like we can't say, oh, you know, if we just took this bit because it, it's, it's like a package yeah, and the package was, like you said, more compatible than it was incompatible. And yeah. it was just that at that time, or even probably still, yeah, still now, to be honest, it's like there's still areas of improvement, which yeah. we can look at as like sad, but to me, it's honestly, it's, it's like, I'm like in my head, I'm thinking, all right, relationship coaching. And okay, I know what the problem is. Like, let's see like how, how much progress I can make in this area now. Or is like, that what you're going to do? I've already like been looking for someone. I'm going to find like a guy or uh, even a girl who's like, you know, who's, compatible with me in that sense but i haven't mm. i've known for a while but i've never actually wanted the <laughs> you never wanted to admit it kind of thing it's not that it's that I, i've i've known it i've admitted it but i've also thought that it's just better to be like that and I, i've started yeah. like being around more people who are into this vibe of like a very sort of like healthy honest vulnerable way with they the way that they interact in relationships and i've been yeah. really really interested in that and i thought like mm-hmm. that's what i wanted to like, convey myself with like i even did like kind of like an experiment where i thought <laughs> like i went on tinder like two weeks ago and i was like you know what i'm not being a fuck boy anymore i'm not using shirtless pictures or anything i'm literally just gonna like post like good like i literally made a folder of like good boy pics <laughs> where i'm like oh all God. clothes and everything and it was just the I mean, yeah, like that, I was just thinking like <clears throat> after experiencing what what I had from you and obviously comparing that to hookups and one night stands and like friends with yeah. benefits is like, it, honestly, it doesn't even compare yeah. from what I've got from, from our time together is that I am like a relationship guy. And now that I'm honest with that, it's like, I know exactly what I'm looking for. And yeah. because of that, I don't need to act in in a certain way, which is better for hookups but worse for relationships because that's how I've always been for, for my adult life. I want to go the opposite yeah. way around now where I'm better in a relationship but worse in a hookup, which that's like, mm. that's negative for the ego, which wants, you know, like better girls, body count, it wants loads of guys to know that I'm shagging. But yeah, the amount of fulfillment I'd get um, from you was just yeah. insane. I'm going to book an Uber. Was it, if I go off Zoom, will it go off? No. Yeah. Man, this podcast gonna be four hours. I'm not uploading this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to Sam and I'll tell him like the first two hours are good. Just use them and just jack off yeah. the, the second two hours if you want, mate. <laughs> God damn, bro. Sorry, it's just loading. It's just confirming my track my people. I didn't expect us to be on this call for this long. Yeah, me too. <laughs> my driver is three minutes away. Yeah, I'm just like getting ready <laughs> for this Uber. Um, shit, what do I need? <laughs> Sorry, I'll be back with you in a second. Are you still recording? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I can just end it out. Can I? Oh, wait, yeah. let's say the goodbye to the podcast. <clears throat> Okay. All right, boys. 
me and Eve have been speaking for three hours and 50 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Any closing remarks, Eve? Um, I don't think so. Mm. So Eve has her own YouTube channel and in the last couple of videos, she's got quite a lot of clips of me that you boys haven't seen. So I'll link her channel mm -hmm. in the description and you probably want to go and see those videos. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>